There you go. Won't you be my neighbor? How you guys doing, man? It's Joe D. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sharon Beer. I love it. We finally got a decent number. 565, baby. We are back and better than ever. We got Bum, Mark, and Coach here in the house. Today, my warm-up beer was Syntax, of all beers. And my on-the-show beer is going to be Miller Lite, baby. You know, we're going quality. We're going quality then is what I'm getting, right? Yes, we're going quality over over quantity. Okay. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. Well, what it is is we kind of play to our audience. And since we do have so many people that are in the transition stage, mm -hmm. coming out actually is what's happening. We have this whole sector of people that are coming out finally. That's what I'm yeah, I think that's better, right, Bum? They're coming out. Uh, from being malt liquor people to now being craft beer people is what's happening. The beer is making it change its transition mm -hmm. and we're being very acceptive of these people. And I think that they need some more support. support yeah, the MLDC is all trans now. They're all trans and, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We're very willing to accept them. And they're, it's they're, it's they're the the MLBGTQ. <laughs> oh, the MLBGTQ. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we support the MLBGTQSTYZ element OP people out there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We support them all, man. They're in their transition stage. To the to the to the craft beer seeds, so you know we'll be here for them. You know what I'm saying? We'll we'll be their support group. <laughs> so we're playing to our audience. We're dumbing it down a little bit, and and right. So you know, me and Bum are 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 you know trying to trying to give them something they can relate to a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not dumbing it down with what I'm drinking. Maybe with what I'm wearing, but definitely yeah. not what I'm drinking. Yeah, just 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 you know. Sometimes it's the visual. Is what it yeah, is. you know. Sometimes. It <laughs> so we support our right coach. Is that what our, our, our you know? Yeah. No, you guys summed it up already. Pretty good. So. <laughs> no GTBQ. GTBQ. Yeah. yeah, we support our ML. DCQ uh, LGB uh, crowd. Yeah. We're here for you. Absolutely. That's <laughs> We've got a malt liquor from J Vig. I'll cover some comments real quick. Neary posted some great photos uh, on, on the uh, hangout. So appreciate that, Neary. Uh, you, of course, he posted a picture of his better side, which mm -hmm. is always welcome. And then the Weber grill, right? How can you hate on that? Uh, some beer on the grill. Fantastic beers on the grill. And uh, that was uncalled for, bum. Because he said malt liquor and I said sweet lager. We'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, might as well get used to it now. And uh, I got a fresh bottle of screwball. I think you're – I think – I'm going to need it. And then we got, oh, be grumble, label out. And then Neary, nice donation. Thank you very much, my friend. We appreciate that. Very Head much. Headphone money. Headphone money. Yeah. Headphone <laughs> money, exactly. We've got, we've got a lobbying group that is like mm -hmm. trying to, we've got this group inside the committee here that's trying to lobby for some very inexpensive headphones. Yeah, they're only thirty nine bucks, thirty nine each. <laughs> yeah, thirty nine hundred. Thirty nine ninety five, right? Yeah, thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, thirty nine ninety nine, right? There's yeah. just there, there's no period in there. That's actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all the way straight through. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm gonna crack mine open. I think we're all familiar with Miller Lite. Less filling. Tastes great. Left feeling tastes great. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think we're pretty much all familiar with that. What are you having, Mark? Uh, I'm having something that maybe Luke Bag Larry would be familiar with, since he's been abducted several times. Oh, oh, that's the UFO. Yeah, he's getting it's uh, the aliens are abducting the PBR. So What's the name of that again? Paps Blue Ribbon. Oh, Paps. Oh yeah, duh. yeah. The alien <laughs> edition. So I think so. Shout out to to Luke Bag Larry. Since he's been abducted, yeah, twenty-four ounce can. Uh, I think it was a dollar sixty-nine. So not too bad. I'm, I'm kind of an MLDC GBTQ territory with this one. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all in support. You know, we're you know we're doing everything we can to support our our you know fellow brethren as they make the transition mm -hmm. into. Fine craft beers from. Well, we don't even want to really. That's an offensive term, really. It's that, kind of like on Poltergeist when she's like, "Come on through to the other, you know, <laughs> the door song, break on through to the other side." There yeah, break. Uh, yeah, there's songs been made about yeah, this. There's songs about it. You know. Yeah, well, that was our toilet paper song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, toilet paper song exactly. I'll share the screen on this. Uh, on uh, just some photos real quick on untapped here uh we can cover this looks like oh yeah we've got some i don't know is this nice social distancing here i don't know what they don't know I better take a picture. I'm not that's perfect. not a bad pairing right there yeah a little jd with uh, the makers. depending on how well you know jack you change them to john and that's how that mm -hmm. works yeah 16 ounces that's what's working right now. Yeah, I got oh, we got some people having a great time right there. Look at that. Yeah. Good well, time. You are. I mean, come on. Look it's at that. One point one three million ratings on here. Thirty seven hundred mm -hmm. in the, practically as much as the headphones on here in the last thirty days. Yeah. Fifteen by me. 4.8% 10 IBUs in a 2.81 bottle cap rating. Yep. I call it a memory. 275, yeah. This, this is one of those good old memory beers right here. Yeah, this, it is. You know, wh whether you, I don't know if you necessarily care for Paps or not, but we all have memories of this beer growing up. Your dad drank it, you know, your who, you know, your who, who, whoever it was drank it. And, and, you know, same thing at Miller Lite. Miller Lite for me is just one of those affordable beers that just mm -hmm. comes with everything. You know, I was having some brownies earlier and Miller Lite pairs well with brownies. Who knew? Mm -hmm. I did. Um, you know, I eat a lot of Oreos too, and it, it, I'll be damned if Miller Lite doesn't pair well with Oreos. As a matter of fact, kids, you, well, kids, it pairs with matter of fact, people, you can don't you know as long as you're over eighteen. I oh, over mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, but dunk your Oreos in your beer. Oh, fantastic! Well, why do you have to be twenty one to eat an Oreo? Well, because you're gonna dunk it in beer. <laughs> Terrible joke. Terrible joke. I recommend that too. You can only improve the taste of the beer by doing that. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's one of those malt something or others. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to use the term too much because we've got, you know, a lot like cigarette smokers, you know, that are getting off of the nicotine. You don't want to really reference that too much you know, while they're in the transition stage. No. And this is kind of a. Is there any update on this uh, label update? Is there any update on the update on when uh, uh, Colt 45 might finally come all the way out of the closet? Do you do you want to save this for for the report? Oh yeah, let's. Well yeah, let's save. Yeah, yeah. I want to rush things. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. What do you think, Coach? What's what's your what's your um, what's your prediction? Do you think this will happen? Do you think? Uh... Oh, you're oh. muted, Coach. Unmute. Oh, uh, as far as what the transition from like malt liquor to yeah, do you think they'll liquor? come all the way out? Do you think they'll come out of the closet? 
I don't know. No. <laughs> 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 oh, we've got uh, Tom in the chat. He says, "What's up, guys?" Hey, Tom. What's up, Tom? Share a beer still e bagging. That's right. Yeah. We're no better than dumb money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vegas says my dad drank low and brow. You remember when low and brow was a thing? Did they? Mm -hmm. I mean, low and brow was. Tonight, let it be low and brow. Tonight, yeah. let it be low and brow. Yeah. yeah. When, when was the last time you had a low brow? The night is kind of special. The beer will flow. Yeah. Must be something special somehow. Tonight, let it be low and brow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the commercials are on YouTube. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I remember in the 80s, people saying, oh, don't drink that Miller Light Low and Brow. That stuff's garbage. You got to get the original Swiss Low and Brow or the German Low and Brow. And uh, I do. If you go to my Untapped, I did try the Low and Brow Zurich oh. that was available for a while around here. There was a light and dark version, and everybody was like, "Oh, that stuff's way better." Of course, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, back, but back then, you tricked yourself into thinking it oh, was. No, it came from somewhere else. Yeah. It said, it had that little imported label on it, so that made it better. Yeah. Uh, for, for, foreigner, foreigner beers. But yeah, I, I honestly don't know when Miller Lite quit making it here. I don't, it's, I don't know how long it uh, disappeared. Oh, we had Larry in the chat. Holy crap. Good choice, Mark. There you go. Larry, Larry, there you go. Been swilling. No. I figured that would get his attention. <laughs> See, that's Amen. why we're here, them, right, Mark? We're here in support yeah, of our we're almost drinking 40s. I'm drinking a 24. Yeah, I, I've got a big one here. Oh, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I you know, I ain't gonna show everything on camera, but you know, yeah, that's it's like you got a big white one. There. Yeah, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta give bigger super chats than 229 for Joe to show you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different level of show right there, you know. What I mean? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's going to take more than 229, right? Um Oh, the cans are already pretty much gone. The 40s are still around. I have a stockpile. Check my IG. Instagram. Oh, we got Who is this? Polo? 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 Polo 3K? Hi, guys. Yeah. Greetings and cheers from Switzerland. Oh, speaking, right. speaking of Switzerland. Yeah. There you go. So when's the last time you've had a low and brown, my friend? Yeah, really. He's, are you drinking a low and brown now? <laughs> um, oh, and then he says Larry. Uh, cheers, cheers, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> so um what what do you have in there coach uh, i'm just drinking some water today keeping it mellow um oh we have some colt 45 in old english here but i'd rather have nothing so <laughs> wait wait, wait. The idaho's finest wait 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 wait, yeah. wait wait why is it even in there um well you sound like my prom date um but number two oh. <laughs> 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 that was a great line. I love that, yeah, man. Great. But yeah, no, I'm just sipping on some H2O, man. Right on. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, some really good prime tequila last night with my beers. So, have uh, you guys seen this Terramana tequila from The Rock? No. No. Yeah. I've been wanting to try it. It's, it's supposed to be amazing, but I haven't tried it. It's his. The Rock is promoting it. Yeah, it's his. It's called Terramana. Wow. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Everyone's talking about. It. It's supposed to be really good. So I don't know, but Craft Tequila from The Rock. There yeah. you go. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Terramana Tequila Blanco. Yeah, I like Blanco. Uh. Probably less of a hangover. Less crap in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, you know, the dark stuff is is yeah, that's where you get the that's where you get the hangovers from. Yeah, that's what's gonna get you, man. In my opinion, in my my you know, but yeah, they have it at Total Wine, uh, ready for pickup here at my uh, local Total Wine. Uh, no charge. How much uh, is it? Thirty bucks. That's not bad. That's, no, that's right in line. That's right in line. In that low mid range tequila. Yeah. Right? Um, hundred percent blue agave, uh, blue Weber agave grown in the highlands of Jalisco, Mexico, hmm. uh, roasted in authentic brick ovens and distilled in copper pot stills. This process creates very hmm. smooth, fresh finish with hints of citrus and vanilla on the palate. <clears throat> Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Rod J that had the coffee tequila. Hmm. He had like coffee no. tequila. I thought. Um. Let me see what tequilas they have here. Have here. Yeah. Well, you look at the price of some of these tequilas, and that one's actually priced really damn good now. Now mm -hmm. for my area here in Arizona, but it's it's competitive. I mean, here's the different prices. Um, like I say, this is just for my area, but if you weren't in my area, this you know, this mm -hmm. is, you know fairly similar. The taxes are gonna be a little different every state. That's gonna right. be a big thing on the liquor. Right. But you know, hey, not bad, you know. It, oh, this one's uh, 20. Don't drink when he's on the PCP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you've got. Oh, wait. Let's see. Let me catch up on a couple uh, comments here. The cans are already pretty much gone. The 40s are mm -hmm. still around. I have a stockpile. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm drinking night shifts, Annie Oatley, and then uh, night shifts, Annie Oatley is a New England pale ale with oats. Hmm. Okay, so don't drink uh, when he's out on the PCP. <laughs> you want that horse tranquilizer again, coach? Oh, yeah, you know me, I'm just high as a kite right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a joke for anyone yeah, that's out there. That exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what does Billy B think about all this, man? Oh, oh yes, yeah. he's still in his bubble. Billy B still in his bubble. I think this is going to be the final week that he's in the bubble. Uh, is he also going to be coming out? He's going to be coming out of the bubble. He already came out, uh, yeah, what, about right. nine months ago. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be coming out of the bubble next week, uh, not because uh, the area is safe around him, but mainly because him being in the bubble really blocks my view of my uh, on-screen notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be live from Detroit next week too. So he he'll be in the bubble for the car ride, but he'll uh, he'll be out of the bubble on the show. You're going to be in Detroit, Detroit. Yeah, Rock and I will be I will be at Steve's party store while I'm up there, oh. picking picking up a nice selection of craft beer and bad beer and malt liquor. Yeah, they have bad. They, they, you find find some pretty good stuff up there every year. Mark, I still got that last bottle of Schlitz that's a year, a year and a half old, still waiting to. Uh, oh, very well, just keep aging it. That's yeah. Schlitz is better yeah. than a fresh Schlitz, that's for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm actually looking uh, forward to that. That's where I find the uh, the Schlitz Bull Ice every year, and uh, mm -hmm. several other oddball things that you can't that I can't find around here. So. Uh, cool. Yeah, we have a uh, with hey Andrew. Hey, what's up, Andrew? We uh, have what uh, could yeah. possibly be an all chairman uh, malt liquor report this week. Really? Yeah. Well, I've done that before, though. Um, before we get to that, though, uh, just to get back to what you asked before, Joe, 
uh, about uh, uh, the the uh, transition of the malt. <laughs> In, in these woke times, you know, there's just certain phrases that were acceptable for decades and centuries and just aren't acceptable anymore. It's looking like maybe the phrase malt liquor is becoming politically incorrect for oh. the first time ever. It's about time. Yeah, we, we, we did allude to this uh, last week, I believe, but... Uh, According to 40 ounce, now I mentioned this before, the Cold 45 was going to do away with the term malt liquor on their labels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, according to 40 ounce Fear Country Club uh, malt liquor, too, which is the oldest surviving current malt liquor available, and it's not available everywhere. I think it's yeah. more maybe out on the West Coast. God knows I've never seen it here. Uh, huh. But Country Club has been around. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say what decade it w it came out in because if I'm wrong, they'll let me have it. It's the it's the oldest surviving one, uh, and it's uh, I believe only available in 40s now. But according to Fear, they are going to soon change the name of Country Club Malt Liquor to Country Club Sweet Lager. Oh, just doesn't have the same ring, does it? I think your that's a canceled term now, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. Malt liquor has been canceled because what does it does it imply systemic racism or something? I'm, I'm probably um, yeah. I, I think it's a trickle down thing from that because the term malt liquor over the last like four decades has been geared towards a certain market. So that's why you got Billy D in the bubble over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. It's a good thing. Actually, this is a soundproof bubble. He can't hear any of this. Okay. Whew. Don't want to get him mad. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet lager. Well, that's that's kind of interesting. Though. I'm going to have myself some sweet lager. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. good. Yeah. Now, and now the, 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 the decision is do we even bother drinking <sighs> sweet lager? Well,. We already told you what the chairman said. He already had his first plastic uh, OE on camera already. He's the chairman's ready for the transition. He's preparing himself. Yeah, well, he better prepare himself because he's coming out. That's the way yeah. it is. So, yeah. he's, he's ready to transition. Mm -hmm. So, okay, with that in mind, when will the blueprint just blow up and when will the chairman finally come on camera? as a regular guest on the SAB show. Well, the blueprints may be in jeopardy, but I don't think you have to worry about that second part ever <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah. Will it may be written, but one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, articles of the, of the new blueprint is still going to be no no video. Will there, 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 there may finally be, be welcomed in with open arms. No. Well they're welcome now. They just have never, yeah. Oh, it's it's just always thing. declined. Um, but uh, I have a feeling we we may uh, make an amendment to it, just like you know, as as people change and the laws change and the and the society changes. I, I there's amendments to the Constitution. I have a feeling there may be an amendment added to the blueprint that uh, if something was originally called malt liquor, you can drink it on camera, even though it doesn't currently doesn't say malt liquor on the label as long as it once did. Yeah. I have a feeling that's uh, going to be how a lot of people interpret the blueprint. Yeah. Well, you got you to change the times. Yeah. So, so anyway. Yeah, we'll I mean, who would ever guess that we would be accepting of these people? Uh, you know, but hey, we're pretty, we're a pretty open yeah. group here. Well, they just, they, they, they they, that was on them. We were always we're always open to new, you know, new ideas and new members. They were they were just closed. But now they're being forced to open up. Yeah. <laughs> so what link do we have here? Okay, so we have the chairman. Uh like I uh, said in the pre-show, looks like we have a new term. Did not Teddy Ruck spin the cap? And that's based on my inability to get that uh cap off of that uh, 40 oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago when it was oh, right on that. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, I missed that part. What was that? 415. 415. Share the screen, Joe. Let me share the screen here. There, there, we, there, we there he is. <clears throat> oh, I know, yeah. Did he, didn't Teddy Ruck skin the uh, cat? Shout to Luke Bag Larry. Motherfucker, you bum. <laughs> Your pirates haven't been good since uh, B. Bonds was skinny and not on the roids. And that's it for that video, real quick. Okay. And, and um, what do we got here? We've got some a large order of McDonald's fries. And he's got also got Arby's waffle fries. So he did double the fries. Oh, he did double the fries. Yeah, and I believe he's pouring some of his uh, barbecue sauces that he uh, bought. I think he may be pouring some stubs onto those fries. Is he still is he still on pace for doing his reviews every week? Oh yeah, he did another new one today. Yeah. Okay, he, he did a hot sauce today. Okay, all right. Gonna hold him to his promise here. Yeah, yeah. we're right. We're keeping him accountable, even hold still. Him accountable. That's right. Yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll get to that video shortly. <laughs> panel. Yeah, so, uh, we keep them accountable, don't we, Mark? We we keep them here, uh, you know. He yeah. said he wants to do it. I'm here to support him in whatever goals he wants to. Do. Mm -hmm. Real quick, we'll get to Andrew. Real quick, Andrew, what what are your opinions on on us as a share beer community supporting the people from that malt community? Making their transition over, coming out. Uh, they're coming out right now, uh, and and making their transition from the MLDCQBSTYZ community <laughs> to the. What well, any thoughts? Yeah. We didn't. We didn't get your opinion on this. Uh, personally. Everyone that is involved in the MLDC community can do a swan dive and do a backflip off their tallest bridge in the city in which they live. <laughs> Ouch. Especially the commish. Especially the commish, huh? <clears throat> okay, so, so what do we have here now, Bum? So, okay. Um, if Andrew Down is a no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. That was kind of a soft no. Soft no, right? yeah. I, I was able to read the screen no. and get the new the new yeah. on. <laughs> so in that last video where he said, "Did not Teddy Ruxpin the cap?" Yeah, I don't know if you caught it or not. He actually almost was able to pronounce Ruxpin correctly without getting tongue tied. Almost. <laughs> almost. But in in this next video. He's doing an outdoor, one of his outdoor uh, hurricane videos. Because uh, uh, what's the name of this new hurricane, Isaiah, or whatever it is? Uh, Isaiah. He, how do you pronounce it? I think Isaiah. Oh, yeah, I have no clue. But uh, oh, so that's what they're talking about. See, I, do, I, I honestly have no idea what the hell's going on. Yeah. But I heard some people, and we should bring this up later. There was some talk on some one of my sports podcasts about I names. How many I names do you know of? How many I names can you name? Israel, Ira, Iris, Isidore, yeah. Isidore, Ivan, Iggy. They should name a storm Iggy, Hurricane Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Ivan, Ivan, Iggy. Ian. Ian, 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 Ian. And we have an Ian on the show every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, not a whole lot of, not a lot of I names. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract you, but that that reminded me of that. <laughs> Up for the river again. So, so here we are. We're on the river. What are we doing here? Where are we going? Okay, so go to go to one minute twenty seconds. We got some cosmic payback here with him getting on me and not being able to get the cap off. 120. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got it. Payback is a mofo, right? Payback. That's what's up, right? You must yep. be looking around looking for cops. <laughs> During a hurricane. Count them, Joe. Count the attempts. Here we go. Give me my hurricane. 
One. Okay, that's a, that's one. All right. <laughs> two. That's two. Three. Four. With the shirt, it says. Five. Teddy Ruxpin. Ah. Oh. Oh, he's been teddied. Six. <laughs> seven. Sure. Eight. Sure. Shirted three times now. It's all that French fry grease. Did he even say it? He said it did Teddy Ruxpin the cap. <laughs> he knew it. in the cap. Was it eight times now? Eight times. Nine, ten. The tenth time's the charm. He finally did it on the tenth attempt. Wow. What a jerk off. Now he. No, he is able to laugh at himself. He works in the cap, so he's, <laughs> he's got a small amount of humility. And then, of course, he doesn't toss, his, toss it because we don't Not pollute. Sure. Give a hoot, don't pollute. So, so that's it for that video. Oh, he really did that. I, we we got to kind of watch some of that again. Because he was really messing this one up. You know, we got to watch a few of these attempts again. Here he goes. Give me my hurricane. Hoot. Oh. Hoot. Oh. Hoot. Oh. Oh. Hoot. Oh. Hoot. Oh. 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 Teddy. Oh. 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 Oh, it's Teddy Rupp's in the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you got a new, new turn. Uh -huh. oh, yep. oh, oh, there it goes. Hey, he finally did it. Yep. <laughs> now, here's, here's what I want to know. How long would he have gone not being able to get that open before he said, screw it, I'm going to turn the camera off and start the video over again. Because yeah. he, didn't, he didn't crack it, so he could have started started the video over again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, th and then he could have just legitimately opened it one shot. and been Right. Yeah. Well, okay, well, are you trying to make give him some credit here? No, he's, he's, doing, he's doing the one take. I mean, is that, isn't, is that part of the blueprint? You have to do it in one take? Well, there's been zillions of videos that uh, he these guys have made that they've not uploaded because there were screw ups and stuff. Yeah. Tom, yeah. what's your opinion on on this latest video with, with the chairman Teddy Ruxpin in the cap here? What what's your opinion on this? He, and a he, remind, took him. he reminded me of like a little kid waiting for his mother to open it for him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like you're a little kid, you can open your mother's cup. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Does he need to get one of those like bottle assist openers that my grandma had yeah. out of the mm. drawer, you know, and and kind of help with some assistance? Is that is like, that what's happening to malt liquor right now? You, you mean like the one I needed two weeks ago? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe maybe it's just something with malt liquor there, bum. What maybe Niagara for his twist off. No, I t just like I told 40 ounce Mad Moeller in the comments, I, I'm like Fred Sanford. I got the arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> so our last link uh, is from today. This is the chairman's newest uh, sauce review. And uh, he does a, uh, a hot sauce for a change. I forget the brand, but it doesn't matter because... Uh, Stubbs is still uh, number one out of his four that he's reviewed so far. Uh, Stubbs is still number number one, but he mentioned something here. Remember, remember, beer drank shoddy from about a year ago who proclaimed himself to be the new MLDC chairman. Oh wow, yeah, that was a big controversy. Yeah, well, I guess a uh, beer beer drank shoddy never totally disappeared. Uh, he's still doing beer stuff, but he kind of. Uh, 
resurfaced uh, the other day doing a live stream. And uh, the chairman mentions that he, uh, I guess, jumped into his live stream. So he has a few comments here. So go to 1015. 1015. I got to admit, just from looking at the bottle and the label here, that, this sauce don't look too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said it's not that hot. It's habanero sauce, but and he said he doesn't want hot. He doesn't want to be some like a lot of these people on YouTube suffering and as he said, stuff pouring out of his nose. He wants heat, but taste. Yeah, yeah I got to admit, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of siding with him on that one. I, yeah, I'm not as big into the heat as anymore as I am the flavor. I like the flavor. Personally, I, I like the Tostitos with uh, habanero. Had two jars last night watching the movie. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So how did them two jars treat you this morning? Just fine. Haven't, <laughs> haven't, haven't had a colon evacuation yet. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have it like some people have it. Have it after Taco Tuesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stumbled on a live stream from... <clears throat> No Beer drink shorty. <sighs> Remember that uh oh, free out wow. black asshole. Wow, he like <sighs> okay, beer more. drink shorty. I think you know what, Bum? Did something come out on and hit him in the in the lap out of that burp, and that's why he had to dust off after that? Is that that? That's what it looked like to me. Er, well, okay. earlier, I think he spilled some sauce off of one of his uh, McNuggets. I think he overpoured. Oh, and those are real McNuggets, too. Those aren't like Burger King McNuggets. These are real authentic Mac Nuggets. <coughs> oh, there's another one. Remember that? Uh, Yo, no free out black asshole. Yeah. They tried to overthrow the chairman. Yeah. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. And we know he doesn't forget nothing because he came after us eight years ago. Damn near eight years ago. <laughs> Not eight years ago. Damn near eight years ago. Damn near eight years ago. <laughs> He can hold the grudge. Badly beat the fucking shit out of you, beer drink shorty. <laughs> so fucking frail. Don't bother meeting me halfway, asshole. I'll drive all the way. Oh! Atlanta. <laughs> to Atlanta. He lives in Atlanta. Maybe swing by and beat the shit out of Pencil Neck Mark. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> a I, a I'd pay to see that. Ah! Yeah. Mark could actually be able to run away, and uh, the, the commission have to waddle. <laughs> I like that one. That was yeah, good. so I'll we'll drive all the way to Atlanta. Maybe swing by and beat the shit out of Pencil Neck Mark. Ah! <laughs> Bolt liquor only, Bolt liquor. Go fuck yourself, you craft beer cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. Oh, oh. That's pretty good. Full of McNuggets. I, I, give, I appreciate the, the, the concern. I appreciate the concern. Yeah. Now, I'll leave it up to you, Joe. If you want to watch another clip, this is from uh, a week ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that this is. It's we, we got some stuff that you like from the chairman with a little bit of, uh, you know, his verbal stuff that happens to him when he drinks too much malt. Oh, yeah. You want to watch some? Oh, please. Okay. Yeah, bring oh, yeah. it. We got to okay. have Do we not like this sort of thing? Is this not what we live for right yeah. here? The show. Oh, I think you'll, okay, I think you'll like this. Um, this is last Saturday's Saucy Saturday Review. Oh man, yeah, we got to watch last Saturday's. So, uh, go to seven <clears> fifteen. <throat> yeah, last Saturday's sauciness will will definitely work with me here. And he does mention once again, Stubbs remains the king of. So he really likes Stubbs. Yeah, Stubbs has many different sauces too. 
What what part are we? I'm sorry. What part? Uh, Seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. Guy Fierro. I can't. Point. After that old black asshole with the cowboy hat. <laughs> No number one in the clubhouse, Stubbs. No, you're looking down at this barbecue sauce review right now and smiling. Yeah, he's eating uh, Guy Fieri's uh, sauce, or as the chairman called him and kept kept calling him in that video, Guy Ferrari. Guy Ferrari. This is definitely good fucking barbecue sauce. I got to admit, I never, never would have thought the chairman as one of these guys that would actually take the barbecue sauce and actually pour a little bit on every little <laughs> and then take the I yeah, thought that was a good man that and just pour stuff. some out on the plate and dunk the son of a gun. Yeah. What do you think about that, Andrew? Is that is that is that a manly thing to do? Kind of pour a little bit out on your nugget. And <laughs> then... <laughs> get, get, give me a separate container. I'll pour some in and then... <clears throat> Maybe yeah, dunk it and down the hatch. Ain't that how they do it in Minnesota like a real man? Yep. <laughs> what about it, Pencil Nick? I mean, ain't that how they do it in Hot Atlanta? No, it's, even Pencil Necks do it that way. I don't know what the oh. fuck. <laughs> by, by the way, uh, on uh, I was watching an episode of Triple D one time, and guy was said, if you want to think about how to say his name, his last name, if you're to think about it, he said, "Feed Eddie." So when you say it, think Eddie. Feed Eddie. Feed Eddie. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm I'm sure the chairman's concerned about that. Chef Guys, Kansas <laughs> City barbecue sauce is your traditional go-to sauce, and you'll dig just about everything. Oh, oh wait a minute! Smoky <laughs> molasses. Whoa! Wait. It's about <laughs> Everything. And you'll dig just about everything. Sweet smoky molasses. You know, in an apple cider vinegar, a little black pepper heat. We'll rock everything from beef brisket, brisket, beef brisket to chicken wings. Replay that, Joe. That's the part. A little black pepper heat. We'll rock everything from beef brisket, brisket. <laughs> Eat brisket. Eat brisket. <laughs> in an apple cider vinegar, a little black no. pepper heat. Hurt. We'll rock everything from beef brisket, brisket. beef brisket, <laughs> chicken wings, <laughs> or anything else you can throw on in brown. Uh, in so how much do you want to bet that this is the second 40 of the day? I hope so. Yes, well, say brisket. Well, Mark, are, are you assuming that based on his inability to read there? I'm just, yeah, just a, a scientific, a swag, a scientific wild ass guess. I might be wrong, but. <laughs> okay, well, we, we have, you may be right, but also we may have a possible explanation coming up. Just jump a half minute ahead, Joe, to 9.05. All right. All right. There's a medical reason. I'll accept it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if there's a medical reason. Tell you what, these barbecue sauce or any type of sauce reviews. Here we go. It's gonna definitely improve my reading skills. Pretty much, don't read anything. Here we go. I'm, I'm gonna put a little sauce on my nugget here, and, and kind of delicately. <laughs> Putting this sauce on his down as I do it. Zero books. I never would have guessed he was this type of guy. Who the hell does this? Pretty much don't. I'm surprised. Pretty much don't read anything. Zero fucking books. Wow. He admitted <laughs> that on camera. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't show either. I mean, you have no idea. <laughs> It definitely improve my reading skills. Pretty much don't read anything. <laughs> Zero fucking books. <laughs> Jesus. That's obvious. Just look at the pictures on the internet. Just look at pictures on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's and he's a Trump supporter. Beautiful. 
Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, uh, and Google gives the rest. Hey, Google. My writing. Hey, Tom, would you have ever figured this guy? Who the hell does this? <laughs> Who the hell literally pours a little sauce on every nugget super delicately? Uh, the only time I ever do that is like if I'm at like the end and I want to put like a some sriracha or something like that a little bit. You know uh, what I mean? But like, uh, you, get the, you just get one of those little plastic cups, you know, even, even like that, you know, just like a dipping cup. Filled yeah. up. Here, here's the funny thing. He's buying a bottle of sauce every week. I don't know who goes through a bottle of sauce. Yeah. You would think he would not be conserving it. You would think he would use any excuse in the book to like dump out a bunch yeah. and just get rid of the bottle and move maybe, on to the next. Maybe he takes like, the rest yeah. like you do, Joe. Maybe he takes the rest into work. And then. Yeah. What, 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 work. what was that, Mark? What, what, what did you say? <laughs> maybe he gives the rest to his mommy. And his yeah, mommy okay. Yeah. yeah, he comes out of the basement <laughs> and gives the rest to his mom. And his mom does something with it when she goes to work. <laughs> that's a lot of empty sauce, isn't it? I never would have figured it for that sort of guy that just kind of like, oh, I'm going to put a little bit on here. And that's a <laughs> <laughs> he needs a bottle like a wine bottle. He, he's, a, he's, a new age sen he's a new age sensitive guy. That's Mark, that was a good one. Take it to work. <laughs> like, like, like Joe takes his Oreos to work. Can you picture the chairman take taking yeah, the no, barbecue? Not Here, finish this bottle off. <laughs> not so much. And besides that, whose work fridge don't have like two million different kinds of condiments in it? Yeah. Oh Jesus. And, and how old are some of those condiments? Like, if you reach for a mayonnaise in the fridge at work, good luck. <laughs> right. It's Especially. Especially take note on the year it expired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I tell you, man, I I just never would have I never would have thought I, I never I I guess it, it's a secret. It's it's just a little new, you know, little slice into the into the uniqueness that is the chairman. Yeah, yeah. I so. mean, okay, you okay, you think okay, you think about it. All right, think about it. He's getting McNuggets. We, we've all had McNuggets. Right, mm -hmm. uh, we've all had them. Okay, even McDonald, even McDonald, in the instructions to eat Mac Nuggets, uh. gives you no charge. These little plastic cups to dip the damn chicken in. They're designed to yep. be dunked. Yep. They don't give you squeezy packets. They give no. you. Dunkers. Yep. So what does he do when he goes to a McDonald's? He like, like pour. How do you think he does that, Tom? He probably he probably pours from the corner. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. Just a little and bit then on. He goes back and back yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you, sit and you, sit and you set to squeeze it, so you can get all the you know what I mean? Get all up. Is is that why? Is it does, is it Arby's that that gives you those? Oh no, I think it's Chick Fil A, isn't it? That gives you those nice ketchups that you can either pour, pull yeah. the corner off and squeeze, or you can dunk. Right? Oh yeah, I've seen those. Mm -hmm. I I forget who who all is using those now. Those They're are like, Heinz, aren't they? Isn't that Heinz ketchup? Yeah. It's Heinz. Yeah. 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 No, those and those are the you get to Arby's and you get the little and you have like they have three or four sauces and you can just grab a little plastic cup and fill up each cup with the sauce. Mm. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> That is this is wild to me. And the, yeah, this is the fourth street straight week that he's done a sauce, and the fourth straight week that he has done it in that manner. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to keep watching. Ever since he was a little baby chairman, he probably didn't have done the same thing. How and he's you know, and and to his credit, he is pouring what feels like a whole probably I don't know quarter ounce of sauce on damn nugget. Each damn nugget looks like it has this much sauce, a full layer on it. I'll give him that. I I never would have you know figured him as that delicate. That is yeah. huh. the mind of the chairman. Who can who can figure it out? So. Yeah. <laughs> like that in Hannibal Lecter, you just don't want to go there. 
Yeah, yeah, you just don't want to go there. It, well, thanks, Bum. Appreciate yeah. it. That's it. It's your final look at I think Bill K in the bubble. Yeah. You're on. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill yeah. Bean or Sweet Mom? Yep. Yeah. Sweet Logger. Good luck when he comes to his live Detroit next week. Yeah. We definitely look forward to that. So we will see. Thank you, Billy D, for practicing safe malt liquor reports. Yes. We appreciate it. Nice, perfect social distancing as it is meant to be done. Mm -hmm. Nobody does it like Billy D because why? Works every time. Works every time. <laughs> works every time. You don't fix it, right? Tom, what are you having, brother? I, I just finished up. I think you guys would like it. Trader Reed from Smug Brewing. Oh. Yeah. It's supposed to be for Tom. It's supposed to be for Tom Brady. Trader Reed. Oh, yeah. Uh, back in years ago, yeah. That's they used, Trader Reed. Reed. Yep. they used limes from Florida to make it, so I thought it was pretty cool. I never even heard of Smug Burn. Yeah. Pawtucket? Yeah, they had a Pawtucket. It was a uh, it was the imperial fruit sour key lime sour. It was pretty good. It was like a slightly like a like a margarita of that sort. Mm. It's kind of like founders, you know. Founders they made that uh, what's the margarita one did a couple mm -hmm. like a year ago. It was kind of like that. So it's classified here as a <clears throat> as a sour fruited beer. Uh, one 191 total ratings on here. 81 in the last 30 days, 7%. No IBUs rated. 4.01 bottle caps. <laughs> Boom! Woo! Just made it, Joe. Just made it. Tom. Tom. Damn. Trader aid. I thought it was, I had to grab a key. I thought it was pretty cool. An imperial fruit sour with sea salt. It, it, it do not sound too bad, yeah. actually. No, it does sound good. That's a good summer beer, I bet. It's warm oh, weather yeah, beer. Yeah. yeah. It's like a lawnmower beer. Right after, yeah. You know what I mean? Nice and yeah, sweaty. Pretty there you go. There we go. That's what I just opened up. A little, little something. something. A little something. Those I dangerous. might have a few year, a few. Oh, boy, I've got the same damn thing that Sherman did. I've got a few year old bottle of that in the in the cellar there, if you will. That's probably That's okay. Barley, some barley wine by now. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> probably <laughs> wine wine now. Yeah, I mean, it's seven and a half percent, so it's probably still mm -hmm. drinkable. That's for sure. Yeah, it's good beer though. Yeah, those go down nice and easy. That's like something mm -hmm. you can go to a bar and you always know what you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, because it's done almost too fast. Mm -hmm. Vega says Detroit a malt mecca. Kind of is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I that out. Uh, Ida Iris. And uh, Roger Malt Liquor. Well, Ishmael. Joey. Uh have to give the chairman credit for sticking with that bottle opening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I actually do. I actually do. I have to give him some credit for that. Absolutely. Tom is on the pot. <laughs> I got pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got oh, – oh, do we have Florida on here again? Hasn't he been on mm -hmm. here before? McDonald's barbecue sauce is not sufficient. <clears throat> SWW has to go out. And buy craft barbecue sauce? What a disgrace. That's actually a good point. That's yeah. a good way of looking at it. For as big a fan of McDonald's as the chairman is, you would think. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So when you get Mac Nuggets, what's your favorite sauce? I've got mine. I already know mine. Oh, I, I know just, mine too. Just the regular barbecue the sauce. They don't I don't know what the names are, but the more the the more the the just straight up barbecue sauce is the one I get usually. Off, you get off the oh, I'm sorry, I'm cutting mine. Original sweet original crispy sauce. No, go ahead, Tom. I'm going with the sweet and sour all day, all day. Really? My favorite. No. 
Oh, yeah. Sweet and sour. What do you get, Andrew? Mac Nuggets. Uh, McDonald's. I'm not much of a McNugget guy, but I'm more of a, a bit barbecue sauce or sweet and sour. Okay. Mm. Right. Yeah, the I, McDonald's. Bar I can tell you right bar. now, I, as a matter of fact, because I just had some McNuggets, I think it was Monday, and I get the buffalo sauce every effing time. Buffalo, buffalo sauce. The buffalo is good. Buffalo sauce, baby. I'll, I'll tell you what I used to alternate between. I don't, I, I'm sure they don't offer it anymore. It's been a while. McDonald's used to, in addition to their uh, choices of sauces, they they would also offer honey. They would give you little packets of honey. You're right. Yeah. The the Mac Nuggets dunked with honey were absolutely incredible. And I would every time I would get Mac Nuggets, I would alternate between the uh, sweet and sour and the honey. Sometimes I'd go all honey. Sometimes all sweet and sour. If I'd get twenty Mac Nuggets, I'd get like two packets of each sauce. And back Do they don't offer back. honey anymore. I don't, I don't, it's, I haven't thought about that. When, no. when I've gone through the drive through and asked, what are your current sauces? They never say honey. Yeah, so I mean. just assume that they don't. I, I, I should get some and buy some Subi honey and just uh, yeah. do like the chairman, just squeeze a couple drops. Do a drop double, double drive through, go to KFC, get some that, because they give you honey with the biscuits. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can just go across the street to McDonald's and get some nuggets. Well, maybe yeah. maybe yeah. McDonald's still does have honey because they do give you biscuits. McDonald's has, still has biscuits. Morning, morning Wait, biscuits. They, yeah, you have to I get like. A, oh, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. I know KFC is always good for honey. You can always get some honey. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I just, you know, honey is a big thing in New Mexico. Yeah. For some people, that, if you've not been to New Mexico, don't live in New Mexico. Uh, sopapillas are a big thing in New Mexico. Oh, yeah. Sopapillas are. You get sopapillas, you eat a lot of honey. You get some red, some green, and then you get some sopapillas. I mean, that's basically yeah. that. What, what's a sopapilla? It, it, it's like a uh, deep fried kind of bread, if you will. Yeah, it's like fried bread. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, it's uh, like the same thing. We have, Portugal, we have our, uh, um, our mother side is. It's like the, uh, the fried bread with the, the uh, powdered sugar. It's almost like a. Uh, yeah. Well, except these are just like a pita sandwich, it's like a real soft, doughy pita sandwich that's deep fried. Pita bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, put whatever. I mean, if you go to a typical restaurant, typical yeah. you know, New Mexican restaurant, they, they will typically bring you a basket. You know, some places give you chips and salsa. In, in, mm. in, in, at least in Albuquerque, at least, they would typically give you a basket of sopa mm -hmm. and a big bottle of, uh, of honey. And, hmm. uh, and I mean, when they're fresh out of the fryer, son. Oh, yeah. now, you guys, do you ever watch uh, South Park, Tom? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he sure. when he goes when he wants to go to Casa Bonita, when Cartman wants to go to Casa Bonita. Oh, that's one of the funniest episodes. That's a huge Mexican restaurant in Denver, and, and you you get like simple pizzas out, you know, as many as many as you want. You just pull up the little flag on your table, and the guy comes running over and gives you some more fresh out of the fryer simple pizzas. Oh. oh, Jesus. You got to go to Black Bart's Cave. <laughs> Vegas I, says uh, Blood Meridian is a great book. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But I've Jasmine, never read a book in my life. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just look at pictures on the internet. COVID-19 may, may be barbecue sauce is, uh, is scare, scarce in his area. Um, can we all agree honey mustard sucks? Oh man, McBurger honey, honey mustard, mustard is awful. asshole. What's your favorite fruited beer? Or do you hate that style? I, I don't know, man. I kind of like honey mustard. It just depends on the honey mustard. Yeah, yeah. You remember the old, uh, yeah, old uh, Burger King used to do the tenders before they did the. Uh, before they did the, the chicken finger thingies and the whole for nine yards, they used to have the regular tenders, yeah. the long ones. Oh, those are my jam. Those are like a younger come off of football practice. It's, yeah. it's funny you mentioned that, Tom, because and I, I'm sorry Mark's out of the room right now because I was going to ask some of the old timers here if they remember going back 20 years ago, Kentucky Fried Chicken had Kentucky Nuggets, and they were mm. – 
they were sold identical to the way that uh, chicken McNuggets were sold in sixes or uh, nines, tens and twenties. And they were like an inferior version of McNuggets. And they were uh, uh, they were fried, of course, but they were more crummy than uh, the, the McNuggets were. And they offered different sauces, too. I personally like them. I don't think you got quite as much uh, per weight, but uh, yeah, they, they were called Kentucky Nuggets. They were probably around six, seven, eight years, and I haven't seen them for probably pushing 20 now. Okay, if we're going into the nugget discussion, who has the worst nuggets right now? I side for oh. Burger King. they got to be easily the worst nuggets out there. Yeah, they're pretty I, bad. I, I think I may have had them maybe a few years ago. When I get them, I only get McDonald's. So other places, when I go to the, you know, like Wendy's or something, I'll just get a burger. Uh, mm -hmm. McDonald's has been the only uh, nuggets I've had for years and years and years. Burger? Go ahead, Tom. Burger King is almost like styrofoamy when you eat it. It's like you bite into it and it's squishy. You know, yeah. Like, there's like lines of meat and they're like... I mean, they're only a dollar. They're like, what do they make shit out of? Like, yeah. Like, what? What am I eating? Like, that? but McDonald's. Like, at least McDonald's. It's like a form nugget, and it tastes better. You know what I mean? The 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 last time I ate it at uh, the King, I, I I think I had a, had like their Big Mac or Whopper, whatever the hell it is that they call it. And <laughs> it's like you bite into this thing, and it's like you're you're tasting uh, grease. It's like Really, it's like I've had, I've had better sandwiches at different uh, restaurants than this. Okay, real quick, Vegas right? Fast food. Fast food strictly. What's your back your 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 favorite go to? Maybe not even your favorite, just for whatever reason, your go to breakfast sandwich: McDonald's, Wendy's, mm. Burger King. Who? Who are you going to go to if they're literally side by side? Who are you going to first? Who, what's your breakfast sandwich? What do you got, Bum? McDonald's steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Oh, you Ooh, sounds you good. Can't. Extra napkins on the bottom so the grease yeah. doesn't burn through the oh, wax paper oh. and ruin your clothes. God, I forgot about those. You know what? Um, we, 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 for some reason, the McDonald's here don't have those anymore. They don't have them here either. And I see those. Those steak and egg bagels on the menu, I buy them every time. They're freaking delicious. You're right. What? Oh, yeah. God, you bastard. I forgot about those. What, what, what do you got, Tom? What's your favorite, your go-to? Oh, man. I usually just go to, like, Dunkin' Donuts. And, I mean, I haven't really? been there in a little while, but I'll go get, like, a sausage, egg, and cheese on a croissant. Okay. But lately, I've been going to Market Basket and just getting, ordering a couple sandwiches, picking them up, and being mm -hmm. good to go to, like, doll fifty a piece. I'm ready. I've heard that about market. That is so funny because I haven't been to a market basket since I was a child. I have not seen a market basket since then. Yeah, you, you're probably better off, to be honest. <laughs> 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 well, what, what, what about you, Andrew? Go to breakfast sandwich, fast food. Uh, I'll go with the. Uh... Sausage, egg and cheese, add bacon. Uh, wow. McMuffin at, at uh, the Golden Arches. Okay. Oh, this is and sausage and bacon? You can add bacon. Oh, okay. Yeah. McDonald's was, was uh, <laughs> one of the last holdouts out of all the fast food restaurants for, where they didn't have add bacon to your sandwiches for years. Mm -hmm. Until the last, maybe last, I think five, six years, they started adding bacon. Oh, okay. What What about you, Mark? What's your go-to? Um, I'm with Andrew. I I like the sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. Uh, bacon's good, but just the standard sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit at McDonald's, and then you got to go with the original, the egg McMuffin. I mean that that is still mm -hmm. yeah. forty years later. That is still just yeah. Solid. You get that with some hash browns and a cup of coffee, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Egg, up egg McMuffin. And then another, another side note on fast food: uh, McDonald's 
uh, hash browns are the bomb, especially if they're fresh out of the fryer. Yeah, you got to get them like more than like, but, like, but but they, 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 they got to be burn your hands, bur burn the interior of your mouth hot because yeah. as soon as them some bitches go cold, yeah. shit can. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, this is just a little controversy because <clears throat> I like right now they both have two four. So, depending on where I'm at. I like the sausage, egg, and cheese uh, at at uh, McDonald's. Uh, the McMuffin sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin two for four is a great value. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that probably once or twice a week. I have to admit. It, but the, if I'm at a Burger King, same thing. Two for four sausage, egg, and cheese croissant. And croissant. Tight cheese, man. Getting the hash browns at Burger King or getting the hash brown at McDonald's, not a bad way to go, man. They're, nah. they're both pretty good. Yeah. Hash browns, if they're hot and they're fresh. Yeah. But but the king of the hash of the of the hash brown style is Sonic, bro. Sonic kills it. Yeah, we don't have very many. So we have maybe a few Sonics here, not too many. So we don't. Yeah. Sonic still kills. Now I don't go to Sonic that often. Yeah. But mm. boy, yeah. I mean, when it comes to a hash brown style potato, I mean, you can go to Sonic and you get them tater tots, and you're like, "Damn, son, yeah, these are good." Yeah, Sonic does good. There, there's a Sonic that opened up uh, mm. just east of me, a mile or two on on the restaurant hill, I'll call it, mm. and. When that place first opened up, I mean, there there was literally a traffic jam up and down Suburban Avenue. Wow. <laughs> and they actually had people waiting in other companies' parking lots. It's like, okay, here's your number. You got to go wait. <laughs> now, we've it's got like, it's like other people. If, uh, if it's like that, it's like, no, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'll come back in two months <laughs> and see, we'll try it out. Yeah. So Chad said you're right. I forgot about the honey. And then uh, Vegas at Cognac. Cognac McCarthy wrote, "No country for old man." No. <clears throat> Wendy's nuggets are top shelf, son. Yeah. Wendy's does good nuggets. Yeah. Oh man, Chick Fil A, dude. Chick Fil A are, are the best. Chick Fil A. Oh man. You know what, Dairy Queen. I didn't grow up with Dairy Queen, and there's literally a Dairy Queen down the street from me. I I never even think about Dairy Queen. They it's, actually are pretty. They actually do good. Yeah, Dairy Queen's pretty good. I I, I didn't They're, grow up with it, and to me, I always think kind of cheaper fast food. I never really think of them as yeah. good fast food. Well, I I see, tasty ice cream. Freeze. That's what we had in Pittsburgh. Was Tasty Freeze was all over the place. Yeah, He's, I grew up. Yes. I grew up with Tasty Freeze, and you'd get a bucket of fries for like two bucks, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Tasty mm -hmm. Freeze, the one that I, the the now uh, Dairy Queen that I pass when I go to my compost uh, site, that when I was a kid was a Tasty Freeze. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the owners just decided to switch over to, to uh Dairy Queen or what, but they, they did the switch back in the 80s. You used to see, when I was in high school, huge crowds of us for lunch walking over to the Tasty Freeze because you could get, for two bucks, you'd get like a bucket. I think it was like, maybe for two fifty, you could get like a, a large fry and mm -hmm. and a soda. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was now, a great... Fries and burgers, do you... Bum, you might remember because they had a number of these in Pittsburgh. I know what you're going to say, Burger Chef. No, no, I was going to Roy Rogers. Oh yeah, yeah. Roy um, Rogers had really good burgers and fries. Yeah, I think I got food poisoning from one of their roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> How about Winkies? How about Winkies? Winkies makes you happy to be hungry. Be hungry. Winkies has just a little bit more. There's no Winkies in Wilmerding, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no Winkies anywhere. Yeah, yeah, but that was part of their commercials, wasn't it? Wasn't it everywhere? Yep. Wilmer Ding. <laughs> yep. Yep. Carl's Jr. biscuit and gravy with the E, with extra sausage, just like Coach likes it. 
<laughs> I remember, okay, I remember when, and you got to go way back with Carl's Jr. because I love some Carl's Jr. I remember when Carl's Jr. had chimichangas. And then those Carl's Jr. chimichangas back in the day were the bomb. They were good. Hmm. Um, Chad says, what about tenders? Who has the best? Anybody want a voice on that? Tender? I, I can't give an opinion because, once again, I haven't sampled all of them. I've had them from Arby's. They're good. I tell you right now, hands down, bam, who's got the best tender? I tell you right now. Canes. Canes? Without a doubt, if you don't have a cane, you don't know who has the best tender. Zaxby's, cane, Zaxby's is good too. Yeah, fast food tender. That's that's just all there is to it. That, that's their whole thing. Their whole gig is tenders. Canes the whole gig is tenders. Yeah. That's all they do is tenders. They're they're a Louisiana chain, yeah. and they do tenders. That's all they do, and it, they do it damn well. Those are like grown up nuggets. That's what tenders are. Grown up nuggets. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but if you're talking just tenders and you got a canes in your area mm -hmm. and you had them, you're like, all right, these are good. <laughs> are you going to get them all the time? They're a little pricey. I don't know. But quick question here on canes, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Is it me or are they all owned by the same company? They're the same company. I don't know. Is canes tied in with those? Yeah, Carl's because Jr. and Hardy's definitely the same. Yeah, yeah. Hardy's are, just, just look at their billboards. They, they they've got like the same font as far as like the how the Kane's name of the June restaurant is spelled out in the look, same colors. Yeah. Is Kane's tied in? Uh, yeah, I think they are. I don't. Kane's. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, oh, a lettering same kind of thing. Yeah, I don't think Canes is, is affiliated with it. Let, let's look that. Uh, you're blowing my mind right now. Um, Carl Jr. and Hardee's, yes, 100%. Yeah, Carl Jr. and Hardee's, yeah, there's no oh, argument. Yeah. They, they yeah. are one and the same. I think that, that unification happened, what, maybe 15, 20 years ago now? Yeah, it, it's been a long time. time. But, but look, here we go. We've got uh, – whoa, 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 whoa. What happened here? Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers fast food chain, specializing in chicken fingers, uh, founded in Baton, Louis, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Todd Graves and Craig Sla 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 Salvi? Salvi? Ugh, ugh. August 26, 1996. That's not necessarily telling me what I need to know. Uh, yeah, because says, screw the fast food and come to Hannaford's tomorrow and get a New York sirloin steak. <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi for years they own KFC, uh, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Bell. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah, yeah, it it looks like Canes is all by themselves, man. They really mm -hmm. are, yeah. yeah. That's maybe it's just, maybe it's just yeah. coincidence, then. Yeah, yeah they're rage, they're uh, I don't think. Cursive writing on their logo. I think that's. I don't think they even look the same. They they're not even remotely mm -hmm. close. Yeah, no, Kings is good. We have one. Did that one go out of business, boss? Kings. Funny when, the, when you look at products, Racing it says there, there, there's one that just got put up. Uh, not not far from me, out in Oakdale, in okay. a suburb. I think we. It, I think it's we right across the street from a Hy-Vee. I've got to check and see. We've been there a couple times, but it's been a couple years. And they got some good sauce, man. They're dipping sauce to come. Oh, man, there's sauce. There, there was a disgruntled manager that quit from one of the stores, and he took actually took the recipe and put it on Facebook. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, He's probably got nice, nice to get for that one. Yeah. They're, they're, they're pretty good. Raising Cane's is pretty good, man. Yeah. Um, but that, to me, that's the ha hands down the best tender. So, answer to Chad's question. Uh, okay, so if you don't have canes in your area, what what else would be the best tender? Uh, Zaxby's is um, good. That's that's kind of a southeast. What, what about McDon McDonald's? For a time, had tenders. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Zaxby's is better than McDonald's. Okay. Canes uh, is better than Zaxby's. I agree there. So yeah, oh, so it would be canes, Zaxby's. And then if you go into Nuggets, yeah, Chick-fil-A is good. Yeah, you're right, Tom. Chick-fil-A and then Wendy's and then McDonald's. 
I mean, you got Popeye. Culver's is pretty decent. Popeye's got to be in there somewhere, right? I and mean, they're not the greatest, but no. I've I've never been like really like wowed by by Popeye's. To be honest, I haven't either. But the sandwich is good. Yeah, the sandwich that's, is good, and that's that's their, their basic straight up fried chicken is good. There's decent. Here, here's here's a funny connection between uh, Popeye's and Wendy's. They're owned by the same company. Hmm. Well, I didn't know right. that. Didn't they get know yep. that. Popeyes just recently get bought. I think is what it was. Yeah. Put the hash brown in the sandwich. There we go. Oh, there you go. That's a potty right there. That's a potty that, in the mouth. Dude, that's a professional right there. That that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a pro <laughs> tip right there, man. I have never. Why haven't I thought? Andrew, why haven't men like us thought of this? Come on. Ooh, ooh, hey, have have you tried the Taco Bell set sandwich, breakfast sandwich? No. They put the they put the hash brown in, in the, don't they? They with put the salt. Right, right, yeah, it's like a it's like a like a uh, uh, like yeah. a beer or something, right? Like it's like a it's, it's super like, salty, like but it's so good. Yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, babe. Taco Bell could never do any wrong, but until like 20 minutes later. Oh, man, you're killing me now, son. Now I've got to have that. You realize, Joe, don't you, the rest of this show is going to be about fast food. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're already on that room. Yeah. Rumble the, is the, the, the commission is going to love this, this episode. <laughs> Sonic is trash, says Vega. Um, hey, I'm not arguing with you. I, I All I'm saying is when it comes to hash browns, though, Tater tots rule, son. Like tater tots. Okay, M M Minnesota de facto tater tot hot dish. They're not, they're, okay, look, the Sonic, the rest of their menu. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna give it to you on every. But man, like you, I you could forget sometimes when you go to Sonic and you get like a large tater tots with the chili and the cheese on it, oh, and geez. you're like, you know what? Is it, this ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, the milkshakes are bomb, too. The milkshakes are on a whole different level. You ever tried, you ever tried any of that milkshakes? Basket is in New England area. Okay. I wonder well, if my basket was founded in Texas. Um, screw the fast food. Come to Hanford's tomorrow and get a New York sirloin steak on sale for two ninety nine a pound. Have that with some eggs, baby. Well, I mean, you can go to a grocery store. We're not talking about going to a grocery <laughs> store making stuff. I mean, we're talking about going to fast food. And we're talking about slumming here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, speaking of of going to the grocery store and whatnot, I I kind of posed the question this week to 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 uh, the crowd here and. I'm curious. Now, I ordered my first grocery delivery, practically. It's not my first ever, but practically my first grocery delivery since since all this corona stuff started um, from Walmart.com. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, man, it was freaking great. 55 bucks. I got 17 items delivered to my door. I'm telling you, man, I'm never going to the grocery store again. That order was just right, son. I mean, that order was I'm done. Why go why should I they charged me eight dollars to deliver it? It was like seven ninety. Yeah, that's, not, that's nothing, right? That's your gas. That's, that's your there, there like, have there have been a few uh grocery stores here in the metro area. Where I'm at, that that have had a delivery service for years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was telling I was telling the guys here in the pre-show, the first time I ordered grocery delivery was in 2002 or 2003 uh, from the local local grocery store chain in uh, New Mexico. Uh, that was the first time I tried it, and I tried it a couple times after that, but I haven't tried it since then. So it still feels like my first time. Um, mm -hmm. But that just posed the question to me. Have you tried grocery? It's a foreigner song, Joe, just so you know. Huh? No, it's a foreigner song, I said. Yeah, it feels oh. like the first time. It feels like the first time. <laughs> I thought it, Mark, you said it. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a good song too. Yeah. Um, but uh, it it just posed a question to me. You know, of of the online, you know, stores, if you will, that you can order stuff from, not necessarily grocery. What's your favorite? I, I order a lot of stuff from Amazon.com, from uh, Walmart.com. Uh, uh, I've not tried Woot.com, but I've been on their site and tried that. That's the Amazon discount site. Um, you know, it, what's your favorite, you know, or is there, you know, I order a tremendous amount of stuff from Amazon. But I don't – there's certain things that I don't order from Amazon. I'll order from other sites, Crutchfield and whatnot, because they do certain things a little better. Um, what's your go-to? What's your preferred site uh, and why? Hey, Tom, you want to tackle this at all? Do you have any thoughts? Um, I, I mean, I uh, kind of basic. Like I usually do Amazon a lot. Um, but me, me and the lady, we actually went to Walmart. And they gave us, like we were sitting there, and they were packing the car, and then the guy tells, tells you to open the door, and then he handed us like a bag, and it was like a bunch of free shit. We were like, wait, what? But I thought that was pretty cool. They gave us like free drinks, free snacks, free all, you know, all the whole nine yards. I thought that was cool, but I usually use Amazon. I, I, I try not to, or we, we do BJ's also. We, we, we uh, They do the order for you, most of the stuff. You get there, you pick it up, and then you shop for like the cold stuff that you know what i mean stuff like that but other than that that's pretty much what we do okay and you're happy you're happy enough with that i get it yeah yeah i mean yeah i try not to go crazy we, we try not to go crazy at least for right now mark what's your go-to man what, what you know uh, go to the main thing we get stuff from online is amazon that's probably 90 90 percent of it uh groceries I don't. We don't do general groceries ordering online, but uh, for for meat, good quality meat, uh, beef, chicken, mostly beef and chicken, pork that type of thing. I use uh, Crowd Cow. Oh, which is an online. Uh, you can order. You can pick different types of meat. Like you can do uh, um, grass fed, uh, organic. You know, see, you know, that's kind of like if we want good meat, we'll go to yeah. Crowd Cow. So you we can get real niche with that is what Yeah, that's a niche. That's definitely a niche. And uh, I've been using them for three or four years and they ship, you know, they ship frozen, so it comes in a in an insulated pack, dry ice. And um, you know, so for like our not like we want to do steaks or burgers or that type of thing, it's good. But most of the stuff is Amazon. We just go to the grocery store, we go to Trader Joe's or Publix or Costco and do the shopping that we need to do. Um, but yeah, did I you mean, the, uh, the delivery just because I get something from Amazon probably once or twice a week at least. Not as much as you, but quite a bit. <laughs> did you end up cooking that lobster that you got? Huh? Oh, yeah. The frozen, actually, the yeah, I, did, yeah. I did get some lobster from Crowd Cow. Actually, if you're talking to me, Tom, I, I did order some lobster from Crowd Cow. Yeah, I think you mentioned that last week, didn't mm -hmm. you, Mark? Yeah, some main main lobster from a from a small. They 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 use uh, they pair up with like you know independent producers. You know, so small family on uh, ranches or um, fishermen or whatever. So yeah, we're gonna do some steak and lobster. Uh, coming up. So yeah, it's so. so um, do you have any any thoughts you want to share with us? I don't have a whole lot I can offer here. I don't do that much online shopping. Uh, Amazon has been my main one going back, pushing 20 years now. Uh, I could, like I said, if I need a specialty item that I can't find in a store, I will do online. I've ordered from barnesandnoble.com, uh, Home Depot, et cetera, et cetera, for, for some things that are not available in the brick and mortar stores. But I still am mainly a store shopper. But yeah. Yeah, most of my online stuff has been with Amazon. Yeah. And what about you, Andrew? What's, what's your... I'm mixed um, across the board. I, I'll go and do my, do my shopping if I need food or whatever, or, or if I'm working on something on the house. It's like I'll go buy. I'll just go to a local hardware store over going to a big box store like Lowe's <laughs> or Home Depot. 
because nine times out of ten I found at my local hardware store they'll have what I'm looking for and the employees there actually know what I'm looking for unlike the big box stores they, they hire people and they don't know the difference between a two by four and two by twelve well I tell you I, I sure do miss having mm -hmm. like an ace hardware or a true value yeah. in my area. I was about to say that ace hardware yeah. is awesome yeah. yeah the 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 biggest yeah. one the biggest store that literally was the landmark for St. Paul was Seven Corners Hardware. And the the man that owned it, he saw all the redevelopment down on West 7th that was happening, and he decided to sell out the store. The, this store w was a landmark for better than 80 years. If they didn't have it, you didn't need it. And they, <laughs> And they also had several other, you could say, buildings around that took that took care and sold like the large machinery, table saws, band saws, welders, whatever have you. All oh, the shop equipment, yeah. Yep, yep. And they had a, they had a catalog you could get, pick it up. It's like almost two inches thick, free, and they had stacks of them all over the store. No. Yeah, and but I'll I'll go shopping uh, Amazon usually nine times out of ten, but if it's something particular I'm looking for and Amazon don't have it, I'll go to Feebay. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I actually I actually went to Feebay for uh, some lock rings for my Kodak carousels. Yeah, it's you know it's interesting to me. Uh, I, I I did that. Uh, grocery shopping on on walmart.com and man i it was pretty smooth pretty quick uh I, I was able to use my uh you know card very easily and all these things uh very convenient very easy very slick and uh man uh, everything showed up here you know great i ordered grapes i ordered carrots i ordered you know lots of uh fruits and veggies they all look fantastic um you know <laughs> grocery shopping no I'll, I'll just go to the store myself and i'm like seal team six in get it what i want gone what's, <laughs> what's good about walmart is if you order if if you say like you order like a 24 pack or something and they don't have it they'll give you the the, the, the one above like they'll give you what if they don't have it they'll they'll give you something above just to be like hey yeah. sorry we didn't have it yeah they, they the Walmart they brand, brand. they'll give you the national brand matchup mm -hmm. yeah yeah they substituted a couple things and that was that was very nice uh, very convenient so I, I had a great that was my first grocery online um I order I, I order Amazon regularly I mean oof. Uh, you know. yeah, for music, for so music I use Discogs. Discogs is my Discogs and Amazon is my primary music acquisition stores and the local record store. So, yeah, Amazon for most of the most of the other stuff. So, is there anything new now? Let me get to these couple of comments before I move on to another. Uh, we just got a few more during COVID nineteen. Did anyone stock up on fast food and have a month's supply? You mean oh, like the chicken with his mac ribs? <laughs> Freeze dried up. 20 pounds. First bump YouTube bandwidth. Um, rest in peace, Steve Gutt. Oh, come oh. on. Ba <laughs> bandwidth <laughs> spammer. If you like seafood, what's your favorite? I like octopus simmered in pasta sauce. Yo, you you are a fan of sea bug. So tell us your favorite sea bug recipe, Joe. Yeah, I you know, I am I am an absolute huge fan of, of, of fr I am a sucker for fried shrimp. I also enjoy California sushi rolls. Um now I as you know, I love sea bugs. Just mm. crave sea bugs. I, I like good fillets of fish. Um, you know, you give me a good, you know, piece of cod or a good, uh, uh, you know, piece of salmon, or I, I even yeah, will have occasional shark steak or something like that. Um, you know, I don't mind actual fish. 
Uh, I've never had like muckaluck or anything like that. You know, none of that whale fat or anything like that. But, um, yeah, the sea bugs and all that stuff. Stuff if it if it swims. My theory on stuff underwater: if it swims, I'll eat it. If it crawls, yeah, forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Forget about it. It ain't going. I I want to try uh, uh, crawfish. Oh, crawfish are good. Crawfish are good. Get them in a real hot, like a Louisiana crawfish, when they grill yep. them in super hot sauce. Oh. Yep. A, fr a friend of mine's from Texas. He calls them what they are, mud bugs. Yep. They, they throw them on the hot, the hot sheet, don't, right? Don't, don't eat that because you got to eat it with your hands. Don't immediately go to take out your contacts when you've got hands full of uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sauce It hurts. <laughs> it's, it's all it's all the cayenne pepper in the in the in the, in, in the crawfish boil. <laughs> that that Jesus. was. Just... Anybody got any new um, COVID related news in your area? Like things that might be opening, um, uh, what might be happening in your area with schools? Any sort of any new thing happening? I know there's a lot of uh, stuff happening actually in all areas. Schools. My Schools up here, uh, from what the talking heads say on the news, is uh, certain districts, they, they might leave it kind of blended where they may let some students uh, do online for all their classes and others, what they, or what they might do is make, make it a blended course, say you go in to school for one day it's like okay teachers say all right this is your curriculum for the week you got to turn your assignments in online yeah but the fiasco with everything of course is logistics and do do the school systems have all the computers do this yeah, yeah. and do they really want to have uh students back in back in school the same with the teachers or they just want to go computer for everything yeah, yeah and we have had some restaurants open to 50 percent capacity up here in minnesota so what do you got tom anything you want to add uh, I know in my area they're basically saying that there's not enough room in the classes for kids to be in the classes because they're like it, it's like trans it's translucent right now it's like it's transparent it's 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 they're like we have thirty say you have thirty kids a class how do you spread them out you can't yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't and then how do you expect these kids to have masks on all day you can't oh no you, you just can't that. You know, that's, it's, what, it's, that's what's interesting is the uh, some of the schools here I know Paul in Pittsburgh. My brother Paul, uh, their their school district is talking about what they call a hybrid, where they have like twenty like twenty percent of the kids go to live go to the classroom once a week. So mm -hmm. you know if you only have if normally a full class is thirty five, then you're only having like ten or twelve. So they bring in like twenty percent each day of the week, and then the other four days they're doing online. So kind of what you were saying, Andrew. Yeah, th that's that's that, that's the blended courses. Yeah, so so the, when the kids are in school, there's only like twenty percent of what they're normally would be. So it's a lot easier to social distance because you only have ten kids in a classroom instead of forty or whatever. And that's then the rest a lot of time, then they do online. Yeah, that's a lot on your parents, though, right? Oh, that's, that's like it's still tough. That's too it's really tough. Yeah. Now, I've, got a, be got cool. a client, I've got a client who's a teacher and I said, so what are you, and he's in Florida. And I said, so what are you doing? He said, we're going back to school in two weeks. He says, but he says, and I want to go back. I want to be able to teach the kids live. He says, but I'm betting that two weeks from then we're going to be virtual again. <laughs> he says, that's, oh, yeah. we're going to go, everybody's going to go back. Somebody's going to get sick. They're going to shut down the school and we're going to switch to virtual. So he's like, we're going to be live for two weeks, and then we're going to be virtual for the rest of this. Isn't, isn't some of the reality of this, and I damn sure want to hear from Bum, but isn't some of the reality of this that the reason some of this has tapered off, it kind of grew back up again, but then tapered off again, isn't a large part of this because we had the little rugrats away from each other? Oh, and yeah. we, you know, we weren't in general getting sick, just in general, just your common cold, 
your flus, all these things are kept down because of social distancing. That works. Mm-hmm. And the minute we get kids back or anybody back in classrooms and back doing these sort of things, aren't we going to get more common colds again and flus and be more susceptible to Corona? Here, here's what it is. Here's what it is, Joe. The reason why kids are such germ factories yeah. it, across the board for those of us who had have kids, it's like of school age. It's like not ev- not every single kid when they go to the bathroom, they don't wash their freaking hands. And oh, yeah. kids, th- uh, yeah, yeah, grown ass men, I can tell you, adults too, adults too. And and that's yeah. why you you've got all these companies. It doesn't matter who you are, or what you do. It's like there there'll be a a sanitizer dispenser on the wall randomly down the, down a hallway and, and they'll have them like every 40 50 feet or whatever the site i'm working at right now they've got uh san, the foamy sanitizer dispensers on the wall all over the places mm. yeah. any thoughts bum anything you want to add what's happening in your area as far as schools go i, I haven't been paying too close attention because it just doesn't apply to me sure uh, I did hear one interesting thing, though, that there was going to be some there was some controversy over whether there would be a dress code for students who were taking classes online. Ah, are you sure? Now, what's wow? Why? I don't know. I guess I, I, uh, I don't know if this took place already uh, or what, but I, I heard something about a student that uh, took an online class in pajamas and somebody deemed that to be unacceptable i don't know well, as long the pajamas, you, clothes, and then shirt on. you have clothes on yeah. yeah i don't know i'm just i mean i'm just was, tossing that out there i mean I, you know who was anybody to you know okay as long as the kid is clothed who, who's to say yeah, with your top on i mean you can have your pants off but if you got your top on and that's all you're saying yeah. then you're good exactly you know, maybe you're maybe not. it's the hybrid thing mark maybe they're saying well kids kids who are in class need to uh, have the same <laughs> level of dress as the ones that are on the computer. Oh, good you know. I think they should be happy if the kids are safe. And, and, yeah, and, that's, um, that's that you're getting out. Wow. I have not heard of their worries as far as on <laughs> classes. Yeah. I, I caught that briefly this morning, I think, on my way to work when I wasn't paying total attention. I, yeah. That did catch my ear, though. I can, oh, I, can, I, can, I can see people being all upset about that, but the reality is, like you said, Tom, you got to get all the kids where they can actually get online classes. A lot of kids yeah. can't access online because they don't have inter- high speed internet or they don't have computers. Or that type of thing, so. Yeah, and that's been that's been the strong point here is that even for some people that have the means, they have the means. They don't just necessarily live in you know. There's some pretty remote parts here in in the desert, and they don't necessarily live in a place where they have access to high enough speeds where they can be. You know, keeping up well, with yeah. the rest of the, they have the means, they have the money, this to yeah. say the resources. They just don't necessarily where they live have that that sort yeah. of access mm. to, to to keep mm. up that that high standard of live uh, of of learning that that some of the other kids yeah. uh, will have. So that's been an issue. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to figure out. Um, Plus, what that is, is, is you have an issue. The, was uh, the governor getting sued by the health clubs here? Uh, mm. There was a big, uh, uh, I don't know, unit of, of health clubs, uh, you know, that uh, got together and sued the governor. And uh, it looked like the governor was going to win at first. The, the, the judge was siding with the governor. And then at the end of the week here, he, he went the other way. And the judge uh, sided with the health club. And mm. so now they're going to be allowed to open. They, they beat their case. They won their case uh, against the governor. Yeah. And health clubs are going to be allowed to open within certain limits. Um, so we'll see. You know, um, it, 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 it feels more and more like 
people just want to do what they want to do and and health be damned honestly um yeah, yeah. No, so, that's, that's, we're not going to be good until we get a vaccine that's where we're going to be until there's a vaccine or, or enough people have had it or enough people have been vaccinated or some combination where it's, businesses need to open i mean if they can't have people coming in then they're going to they're going to go out of business. I mean, the health clubs. So then the people that go to the health clubs, are they going to be, you know, whatever, wearing a mask or whatever? I mean, that's that's the issue. That's the, that's the big problem is the government said you can't open all these businesses because of the pandemic and all the business owners are like, what the hell? You know, you told me I, I got to close and then you're not compensating me for the fact that I can't open. How, you know, what do I do? And that's probably why they sued. Yeah, their big argument exactly was for the health clubs was look we were never even given a chance to show that we can operate within you know we were never given the chance mm -hmm. uh, to show that we can open and open safely you know and which is I, I I don't want them to really open personally but I I get that argument and you should be given the chance. If every other business is given a chance, you should be given that chance to open and at least you know, given the chance to show that you can properly show social distance in a health club. You you yeah. should have that right. I mean that's, at least that's when you go to the the big the big problem is the government is saying you can't open up and then the business owner is like, "Okay, if you're telling me I can't open up, then pay me to not open. You know, I've got, I've yeah, got exactly. to pay, I've got bills to pay. I've invested my life savings into this business. And now you're telling me I can't open. That's fine. Compensate me that, you know, at least make me even. So when, when you do say it's time to open, then I can open up and mm -hmm. call it good and yeah. continue. Yeah. On. And that's not happening. any fault at this point. It ain't any fault of mine. And it ain't any fault of the natural economic yeah. uh, time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's because you're saying that I can't open my different. doors and I have to close my door. Is you know when we had a recession, like yeah, did. when we had a recession, people don't go to don't go to the businesses and the businesses have to figure out how to do it. But now the government's saying you can't open, Mister Health Club. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. I'm a health club owner. I just put half a million dollars of my own money into this business, and you're saying I can't open. Or if I do, it's illegal. Then okay, give me my half million dollars so I can stay. So I can say even. So when I when I can open up, I can open up and you know go move forward. That's yeah, it, it's it, and it's I personally I feel like it, and we've got a comment in here from Chad. What about kids that don't have computers? And that that's a fantastic question. I feel like all the rugrats should stay at home and <laughs> do virtual learning. I feel like all the health clubs should stay closed. And, and 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 figure it out on your own. Go for a walk somewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Do oh, we've been to a health club, and we just we haven't gone in five months. I mean, that's you know. I I just you know, but with that, that's just my personal feel. But with all that aside, you know, there these are businesses. They do have, and I defend that right. You have a right to stay open. The government shouldn't necessarily. You should have a chance, at least in our country, the way we yep. operate in mm -hmm. our country. You should have, and I defend that right. I defend I, just because I feel the way I feel. I, I also feel stronger that you should have a right to to be able to uh, conduct your business yeah. and give a chance. Given you should be given a chance to, I mean, yeah, open. I mean, if the I'm a, I'm a business flat closed, the problem is that okay, you've got teachers and you've got students, but the problem is there's so many other people that count on those jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and what do you do with them? What do you do with all the maintenance people? What do you do with the cops that work at the school? What do you do with all the other support people, the people that work to prepare the food for the kids? Uh, what, what do you do with yep. all these other people yeah. that help a school operate? Yeah. I, I was know? watching something on and the – depend uh, on, on that money. Depend on that income. Yeah. I was yeah, watching that, something on the restaurants. That's the whole problem. Yeah, that's the whole problem with this is – if it's a normal economic slowdown, like a recession or whatever, then whatever happens, happens. I mean, that's just, but when the, when we're in this kind of situation where the government says you can't open because it's a risk, 
then then if you can't open, then what do you do? I mean, I'm I'm lucky. I'm a business owner. I can still do what I do. I don't need that. I don't have a brick and mortar place. I just do everything virtually anyway. So nothing changed for me. But if I had Mark's financial planning in a corner of a strip mall and the government said, sorry, you can't open because of the pandemic, I'd be like, I'm cool with that. Just keep me even until you say I can open because, yeah. you know, how am I, how am I, I can't, if you're telling me it's illegal to earn a living because I'm, it, uh, because of the pandemic, then how do I, you know, I got to pay my bills. You know, now, so another question that was, that was posed, and I'm good. Another question that was that was brought up to me that I thought was a fantastic point that maybe I thought of but not deep enough. And, and, but people that are thinking probably two steps forward at this point are saying, "Look, okay." It, and and we thought about this at least I did in the very beginning. Like, look, you can't put the once this genie's out of the bottle, businesses aren't just going to go back to bring. Oh yeah, come on back. Hell no, we're paying money for rent on this damn place. Why should I have this building? You know what? I'm kind of forced into this situation now of having a virtual office. We're going to keep this rolling. This is good. We've no. already had Google and other big companies like that tell their people. Uh yeah, sometime twenty twenty one, you're gonna come back to work. In the meantime, virtual. How long is it? Okay, before they get used to the virtual office, how much longer is it? Another year before you're just another number now. You're no longer bum. You're no longer Andrew. You're no longer those connections are far enough away now where we start sending some of those jobs virtually now to India. Exactly. You they, know, they, and and, and sad, I thought that was a fantastic point. The sad thing about it is they've been, th this country has been sending jobs overseas okay. for years. Okay, but, but like we had someone that was trying to run for president many years ago, you're going to hear a huge sucking sound of jobs going <laughs> over there. <laughs> Mr. Perot? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ross Perot. Mr. Perot is actually right. No, I'm just going right. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Perot I mean, is actually correct. No, but the uh, no, but you're you're right, Joe. I mean, for the for those jobs that are don't necessarily require people to walk in the door, you know, or somebody to physically be there, that I mean, I've got a good friend who who works in like uh, professional staffing. So like, like placing IT professionals in different companies and that type of thing. He's like, we only need half the space that we needed before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when, stuff, when stuff is coming up for renewal, we're only gonna, we're gonna renew, but we're only gonna renew half of the space that we have. The rest is going away because we don't need it. Keep in mind, mm -hmm. you guys know I drive truck. I'm in that logistics mm -hmm. business. We're part of, now maybe not me personally am doing but part of what my company is doing is moving some of these people from these big office spaces in incredibly much smaller office spaces yep. because guess what they haven't told their people yet but this is the new business plan kids yep you ain't coming back yeah you're gonna work from your you're gonna work from your bedroom yeah, this is, this is this new you're not going to have a job anymore because you do the same thing with, with five people at least with seven, and those five people work from home. Yeah, exactly. Welcome office. back to the show again, man. Uh, any any thoughts on a conversation? Sorry, my computer was sound issues. What was your question? Oh, what, I'm just just posing the general question on. Um, right now on what's happening in your area with with covid back to school is happening right now for a lot of us um those sorts of things i here in arizona we had the house club uh there was 20 of them that got together sued the governor and won so now they're going to be allowed to open um you know a business businesses that never really got a chance to practice social distancing and show that they could properly social distance 
Uh, well, if they can do it, good for them. Exactly. But if we found anything out from all of this, it's that the human race is a pretty disgusting species <laughs> uh, that just can't follow rules or try to... Uh, there's. I kind of have this issue that I've kind of thought about that maybe you could weigh in on there because I feel like the general most uh, typical American these days struggles with giving up some of their freedoms because the, mm -hmm. we're a country that's so used to just, well, we, we have all this, the people that sacrifice themselves and have already sacrificed, this is why we have what we have, so why should I have to give anything up? Well, motherfucker, it's because it's for the common good. It's for the greater good. You just Sometimes you got to wear a mask and shut up and just do it. If that's yeah. what helps us, that's what helps us right now. Right. You got to stay at home for a week or two, then that's that's how it goes. If, if you need to wash your hands after you ate Taco Bell and blew up all over them, well, you should have <laughs> been doing that already, man. Like, there's just, uh, I, I just feel like people need to figure out, like, no, you just sometimes have to make a sacrifice to help the greater good so we can move on into the future. Yeah, it, it you know, part of this that, that, that kind of worries me now is that, you know what, the, the social distancing works, man. Washing your hands and wearing a mask and practicing. Oh, the game, Joe. No. Huh? no, it works. It I'm sick of all your social distancing, Joe. Yeah, yeah it, it, it works, though, man. It really does. And, yeah. and I, you know, I haven't so much as come across anybody with the damn sniffles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're just talking about the regular things that we were so used to dealing with, people getting colds and, oh, man, my, my allergies are really bad this year, and I don't know why, and all these different little issues, and, man, they've just not been there. And no, it's not strong. And, man, the minute we get people uh, back doing some of this normal stuff again, here comes them colds and here comes them flus and all these things and and which makes us brings down our immunity systems and bring back this damn virus again, man. That's double hey, Joe, I almost, yeah, I almost double sneezed the other day. It I almost it sneezed really the other day. It almost came off the other end, Joe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? I did. I, did. I, I was inside the store. I, I, I was like, I, I can't sneeze. I can't sneeze. People are gonna look at me. I can't sneeze. Oh yeah. It almost came out the other end, Joe. <laughs> I don't know what to do. That's true. Hey, we got <laughs> Rod Shane here, man. He says, "Cheers, guys." Hey, Rod. Personally, I enjoy working from home, but have been doing so before the Corona time. Me too, Rod. I've been working from home for five years, so. Bermuda is offering great deals now for remote workers to help stimulate their economy, but have to be a remote worker. Okay, nice. Going Bermuda. Uh, but I'm, first I'm going to the bathroom. The, <laughs> the Matrix wasn't wrong, laugh out loud. We are parasites. And then uh, at Bum, let me grab a beer, man. Bum invited uh, Rajay to chime in. Rod Jay's always full of opinions. He's welcome here on the show. Well, well, well also, uh, Rod Jay is one of the regulars that actually gets those uh, uh, beer bargains all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he gets the Rod Jay deals, please. Yeah. But, no, it, it's just one of the things. Um, it, earlier, we posed a question as well, Zach, about uh, what's your favorite breakfast sandwich, fast food breakfast sandwich? Is it? Uh, you know, McDonald's, uh, Burger King, uh, uh, whatever, you know, whatever else may be in your area. What's your favorite go-to breakfast sandwich? A chorizo and egg burrito. Because that qualifies. And yeah. Wherever we're at, we've, like, we have uh, Chubby's up here who's got, um, we have a couple of different, like, faster Mexican drive through places that... Uh, yeah. Chorizo and egg burrito over every sandwich ever. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing like a good breakfast burrito, man. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Or uh, like a, a chicharron breakfast burrito. Yeah. That's where it's at, man. With mm. some good green chili to start your day off. Yeah. Now, that's, since we're back on the topic, that's something from McDonald's that they used to offer that they don't anymore. They still have their little chintzy breakfast burritos. They used to have a McSkillet burrito. Does anybody remember those? No. Yeah. No. Potatoes, I know breakfast. I, I remember having them. Oh, they were, they were big. I forget how much they cost. They were probably around about three years. They probably discontinued them, I'm going to guess, about three or four years ago. Oh, those think, were so good. I think that's around the same time they did the the, uh, the cheddar jalapeno sandwiches, the double cheddar jalapeno. Yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, dude, those are so good. Uh, yeah, I think they did a purge of a lot of stuff all at one time, and uh, the McSkillet burritos, unfortunately, went. Have you guys seen the thing that Walmart's going to start carrying? The no. uh, Cheeto, oh, Cheeto mac and cheese. And you'll be able to get like four different flavors of Cheeto mac and cheese. And from what everybody that's tried it, I've heard uh, it's pretty much just Cheeto dust in your mac and cheese. <laughs> you made that sound real appetizing. I can't yes. wait. You're blowing my mind now here, bum. Mixed skillet burritos were very different from the tiny breakfast burrito still offered by the Golden Arches. This large breakfast burrito was filled with either sausage or chicken, potatoes, vegetables, two types of cheese, and a fire-roasted tomato salsa. Mm. was so the good. version was delicious. There's not too many chicken anything's offered for breakfast. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I don't ever remember a chicken option uh, around here. It was just the uh, sausage. Hey, hey, said, how like how you chicken. doing, brother? Good to see you back with us, man. Good. How you guys been doing? Excellent. All right. Hey, Rod. Rod, Happy I day. think you're, I think you may be our first ever seventh person. Is that right, uh -huh. Joe? Yeah. Yeah. This level getting to see what it looks like with more than six people. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's absolutely our first seven. Is that a new feature? Because I know what it started, you couldn't have more than five, right? Yeah. We, we're yeah, not going to yeah. discuss what the limit is now, but yeah, this Raw Jay's our first seven. <laughs> oh, we've had the whole we've had the whole Brady bunch on some channels, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whole Brady all, all nine, yeah. <laughs> So, what's your opinion on any of this? Uh, any of this discussion here, Rod? Well, I just got on a little bit ago. So, what were you guys all getting into there? Like, well, anything from what your favorite breakfast fast food uh, uh, sandwich might be to I think for the last hour we were talking fast food and your favorite <laughs> 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 breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> or any anything to uh, you know what's happening in your area with the COVID back to school is happening. Uh, some businesses are actually still trying to open depending on what area you're in. Um, you know, what, what, you know, just, just in general, what's kind of yeah. happening. Well, I guess if it's a breast, a breast, a breakfast. That's a whole <laughs> Now you open the floodgates, right? <laughs> if it's yeah. a breakfast sandwich, I probably have to go with the uh, bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle at this point for fast food. Oh, mm. the McGriddle. Oh, yeah. Because um, you got all, you know, pancakes and you got the eggs and you got the bacon all together. So don't feel like you're leaving anybody out. Just saying. Um, <laughs> about bringing people together, not separating together. Uh, <laughs> as far as the Corona stuff, I mean, it's. I don't know. I'm kind of just all used to it now and what it is. It doesn't even bother me. I just feel like people, there's still a little bit of people out there that I kind of pretty much just call assholes and I don't want to wear the mask kind of thing. That's kind of like you have nothing to really prove by not wearing it. But the majority of people now actually wear the mask where we're at. So yeah, you, for a while, she had some pride in it. One of my um, friends that I know that's a manager here at Kroger. I'd asked him how it was going when he first had to tell people. He said, well, within about 12 hours, he got cursed out about 20 plus times already. So when he would catch people coming in, now everybody's kind of acclimated to it. You know, it's yeah. not, it's the smallest thing you can, I mean, you walk into a store without a shirt, you can walk into a store without shoes and no one serves you. It's no problem, but you, you can't put a mask on. It's like, come on. So yeah. it's not that yeah. hard. That's a good point. I just hate people trying to use the whole freedom. Like what, what freedom are you losing? 
with the what freedom are you talking about? Because one, you're going to a private entity, so the constitution yeah. isn't there to really apply to that. It's the government not doing anything to you. If you don't like it, don't go there. Go to other business centers, other business I'll let you come in, or have it shit sent to your house. You know, you don't gotta go there. Yep. There's people that say, Well, don't ever get my business again if they're gonna do it. I'm sure they're gonna miss you. I'm sure yeah. they are. <laughs> Walmart's gonna yeah. miss that one guy on the thread. <laughs> 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 Exactly, so, but you know, I think Zach hit on it. It's just like we are like the worst. Like no one destroys humans better than humans. So, <laughs> yeah, Walmart has a long list of human types that they'll be happy if none of those ever return to their store. Yeah, <laughs> including non-mask wearers, radicals. <laughs> they gotta go somewhere. People look at Walmart for those kind of highlights. I mean, you don't go to Target. The Target is a different crew than a crew that goes to Walmart. So. Oh, please, a lot different crew. <laughs> I, I've got the one. We we catch the ones that come in, and it's like it makes an asshole more of an asshole. That mm. it's like, okay, what can we get you? And, you know, they're coming in and they're already entitled to whatever they want now. They want to wander mm -hmm. around the tables. It's like, just sit your ass down and we'll get you your damn beer. But then it's like, well, why aren't you offering other food? Because we have to pair with a food partner yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So we're paired up with a local pizza place. Well, I don't like that place. Why don't you guys offer something else? And so, because that's our option right now. Yeah. Well, fine. I guess I'm just going to... This is what the woman actually told my bartender. She goes, well, fine. I'm just going to have a bunch of beers then and drive home super drunk and then blame it on you guys. And he looks at her oh, and goes, man. well, I guess I won't be serving you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's you know? what he said. That's what he said. Wait one second. And then you walk out, look at the sign out front, come back in. Nope. Your name's not on the door. Asking all these questions. Why don't you serve this? And why don't you do that? And you know, well, why didn't your mom have an abortion? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, like, like, well, it's just the like, whole okay. same shit. That, like we had a guy come in the other day, <laughs> busy as busy as can be, and he's trying to sell us something. Doesn't have his mask on. It's like, man, you got to put your mask on. It's it's not just our rule. It's the city's rule. Just just do it. Okay, and then he keeps wandering around. Then he starts touching everything at the bar. Oh. When we said, just hold on a sec, we'll get you a table. Then he's walking up to other tables trying to sell them his hand sanitizer. <laughs> man, you, man, you can't do that. You got to just, you got to go sit down. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll sit down and I'll have a beer. But then he starts touching all the menus. Man, you got to go sit down. Oh, I'm just trying to get a picture so I can say that uh, I was here with my hand sanitizer. Oh, my God. Well, can you go sit? <laughs> this is your table. Go sit at it. And he goes down after he's just fondled every menu we have, which now by all the like all the uh, laws, we have to now throw those away because dipshits fondled them. Yeah. And he sits down and he goes, Well, yeah, I'll take a Guinness. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're at a brewery, you just looked through all of our menus. We don't serve Guinness. Oh, well, I'll take a three ounce pour or something dark. Oh, the, the guy orders a three out three ounce beer. We don't have three ounce beers. We pour four ounce tasters, and that was it. Then he was gone. He was there for an hour, just causing being I'll, a dumbass. I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this nine millimeter. <laughs> just <like laughs> <I'm injury. laughs> yeah, you know, again, you know, right. a, a, another one. You're like, uh, you know, sir. Why didn't your mom just have an abortion? And say, <laughs> People are just idiots, man. Zach, you mentioned about he touched the menus and you had to throw them away. I've seen this in several places. I don't know if this would work for you. You are not laminated menus, flat laminated menus? Yeah, ours, we rotate them so much as far as like we're printing them uh, okay. two okay. to three different times a week, tapping okay. different Okay, yeah, it changes so much. So, so that's been the only reason we haven't laminated. Okay. We used to do that, but um, now we just came up with a laminated uh, QR code that we're putting on the mm -hmm. tables that you can okay. QR That's on your easy. phone. Yeah, yeah. And then that takes you to uh, our whole website type thing of our menus, uh, okay. of okay. beer, the food person's menu, uh, any merchandise we have available. Okay. Oh. 
all, all that, that stuff as well. So they scan the QR code. Yeah. And get the most recent update based on. Yeah, so that's a lot easier because okay. when something kicks, we can just type in on that QR code. It's yeah. just trying to get used to a visual world. It takes a little bit. Yeah. And then you only have to print so much stuff for the people that don't have. Yeah, right. you can put. Yeah, whatever you know. You have to print very, very little amount of material as opposed to, you know, because most people are gonna have smartphones with QR code. Yeah, and a big, a big change for like a lot of bartenders has been learning how to become a server. A bartender and a server are very different. So, like my bartenders have just had to adjust, but they love doing it now of going to a table. So now it's just. Uh, would you like to use the QR menu or have a uh, fresh menu, whichever one they want? And it, you're just getting used to it. Well, do you want another beer? How about some beer to go? Uh, here's our food options. If you want some food, give them a call. Okay. I was upselling a little bit, right? And yeah, it's a lot different than across a bar. It's what do you want? Let's let's go. Let's move. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. So you got to. They have to learn how to be a little bit more uh, suggestive selling, kind of. Tell them, give, give them some ideas what they should say next. Yeah. Hey, here's a good question. What are you drinking, Rod? I am actually drinking from out of Oregon to shoots freshly oh, nice. styped. Yeah, I got a six pack of this the other day. Yeah. Solid, man. What do you think of that fresh squeeze right now? Oh, it's decent. I've had it numerous times. I just didn't have any. I didn't have any IPAs in the fridge, so I got it earlier this week. It was National IPA Day Thursday, right? So. I got, but then I got contacted from one of the contacts from uh, Hot Butcher. I, know, I did a video earlier today who reached out to me because of a couple other YouTubers, uh, No Hype and um, Nerd Sense. So they're like, we want to send you some beers to check out. So they sent me like a wow. bunch of IPAs now. So wait a minute, I, wait a minute. Is that the same Hot Butcher that someone from our show went to the brewery? It's in, Chica it's in Chicago. <laughs> and actually, get beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Wait, what happened? I remember I went, the week I was able to get the beer and I, I, I <laughs> went to the brewery, went to the bar right next to Hot Butcher, and like, oh yeah, they're right next door. And he was just here yesterday, but we don't have any. <laughs> I go, like two weeks later, I'm in Massachusetts. I found a beer at the store. We'll be driving up to Chicago again in another month. I'll stop by and I'll grab one of those hot butcher beers. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were there kind of to send me a few to do some reviews on. Times now. And and Mark goes there and he can't. <laughs> I'm going to try again this year. I'm going to try again this year. Hey, hey Tom, we haven't heard anything about, about your treehouse up there, man. How, how are they doing? Oh, I haven't even been to Treehouse, and now it's now they're doing. Well, how am I gonna say this? Uh, Trillium is doing a delivery, uh, but Trillium will only deliver if you're willing to spend about 150 plus. So it's like I'm not, I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. Um, wow. You can go. You can go there, but then Treehouse is the same thing. If you go on their website, they'll open at 9:30 in the morning, and then they'll allow you to like pick from what they have, but it's only you gotta spend 170 plus. Like I don't want to spend a hundred and seventy dollars. Like what? I mean <laughs> it's good beer. It's good beer, but I mean, you don't want to it's every if, I mean, when I do drive up there I spend like 150 bucks. Like but like for me it's just a different because I can't walk in there. I can't have the experience. So it's kinda you pay yeah. for the experience too, you yeah. know what I mean? So Man, you know, you know how much beer that is in a Raw J world? That's like a truckload of beer. <laughs> it's a lifetime. Beer <laughs> lifetime <avoid>. beer. <laughs> beer. Man. A hundred. What do you think about that, Zach? I mean, you're you're a brewer. I mean, it, it could where do you get the balls to even tell your customers? I mean, what kind of customer? You have to have a solid customer base if you're demanding $175. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's up there. But I bet you they are still pumping it out like no other. Yeah. I mean, people There's walk still up the people lining up for that shit. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. That would be fine if you're having a party. You know, 
which you're not supposed to have because of Corona. But if you were having a party, <laughs> you could get 170 bucks a beer. That would be great. But for two people, I, I don't know what your guys' beer weekly beer intake looks like, but that's about right for mine. <laughs> I, I have to admit, man, when I go to the beer store, I it, I have to admit it. It's not unusual for me to spend two bills. That's, yeah. that's yeah. It's, it's easy to spend a lot of money at the beer store. Yeah, I never, I never get that. I, high I high think the most I spent. At Total Wine, I think it was 150 bucks at one yeah. shot. Now next yeah. week in Detroit, since it's just a once a year trip, and there's <laughs> I'm just going to have a whole massive store in front of me of stuff that I cannot get anywhere else. Oh, I definitely be spending over a hundred, probably yeah. between 100 and 150. I'm going to guess. You just put that in the back of your car and tow it back to Pittsburgh. You'll be good. Yeah. 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 It's usually Give me not much tomorrow night. Too. Like expensive, but one like a couple of bottles of twenty five bucks a piece, and then you get maybe a six pack or something for thirty bucks, twenty five bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, when you visit Treehouse, you're almost putting it into like a winery stent sense rather than yes. brewery. I think. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah, so it, as as we as we go out for this week, man, uh, you know, conclude this show for the week. What? Hey, Roger, you got any shows you can recommend? Anything you've been watching? Netflix, uh, uh, Prime Video, anything you can recommend? Uh, kind of like any well, new movie? <laughs> well, I finally caught up on Yellowstone. I'm hooked into that show. Finally yeah, caught up on that. That's actually, awesome. I like the, uh, the rawness of it and some of the aspects yeah. of what they talk about on there and kind of getting into it. I think uh, Costner's doing well with that. And I've also got caught up on Nosferatu, big in the vampire type stuff, so I've kind of watched that show. And then um, believe it or not, on HBO, Perry Mason has pretty become a pretty damn good yeah. show. It oh, has become wow. a pretty damn good show. <laughs> yeah, Perry Mason. Yeah, I, now, I haven't started it yet, but I've been hearing a lot of good things. Of course, I download it, and then I'll, I'll watch it, you know, once it, once it ends. Is, yeah. it the, is it the original series? or No, no, no. This is an updated thing. This is the guy that was one of the Americans as a young Perry Mason coming back after like World War One and Depression time and how he became oh, a lawyer so, type oh, so storyline. So it's a reboot kind of pre prequel kind of thing. Kind of a, yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of Andrew, kind of pretty much like a reboot kind of prequel, it's, but it's more, but it's more gritty because it's HBO. So, yeah. But the one show that I'm waiting to come out this month that I think is going to blow out the doors just like, uh, Watchmen did last year is going to be the Lovecraft show on HBO that starts here in August. Lovecraft. Love Lovecraft Country that's going to be pretty wicked. Oh, okay. Well, As in HP Lovecraft the author? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen the stuff on that, that's going to be pretty. I think it's going to be pretty cool. They got some pretty good cast for that one. Wow. What's okay. what's like the plot on it? What what kind of is it like a? a it's almost or? like it's. Uh, I guess you said maybe a piece like set maybe around the 40s or 50s. It's kind of got somewhat of a kind of some racial overtones, but then it has like a supernatural twist to it and everything. Because if you ever read Lovecraft, you got the supernatural stuff and just things that happen from out of it. So I don't know. Mm. It's it's different. It's hard to explain. When you see the trailer, it kind of it's got some great stuff going on. Now, what mm -hmm. about there's another series on HBO that I just finished watching? I'll be gone in the dark. Did you watch that documentary? I haven't seen that one. That one's really good. Uh, highly recommend that one. I'll be gone in the dark. If you like true crime sort of stuff, Ooh, cool. uh, really good documentary. It's based on the book that was written by Michelle McNamara. Uh, McNamara. Mm -hmm. and uh oh that one's solid really like that one uh another good series that i can definitely recommend what about um the one on showtime um oh god uh billion uh wait billions yeah billions. i haven't watched it. my wife likes billy she watches that like every week she talks about how good that is i just haven't sat down to watch it yeah i have that one in the queue that latest season i i'm gonna start that one really soon here um, Bar Skins was another one I have. I have in the queue. I have not watched. I don't know how well, it, how good it is. Yeah, that's another one that I have in the queue. Uh, I, I do want to go back and watch the boy. I haven't watched any of the boys at the first episode, and a new season is about to come out. And everybody talked about the boys on Prime being good. It's like that, basically the boy, the boys the is pretty superhero. Good. 
Yeah. I, I like the boys. <laughs> Have you guys seen uh, Hannah? No, that's another one that's supposed to be good. I really like Hannah. I th- Hannah, I think, is probably one of the best shows I've watched recently. Hannah, Look, I, what service is that on? It's on Prime. Yeah. On it, looks in, it looks intense on the trailer and commercials for yeah, it. Yeah, it's real intense. It's got really good writing. Okay. Um, it's just got a, a, a good, flowy storyline. Huh. Okay. okay. Well, here's a question for you, though. I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier or not, but thumbs up, thumbs down. What are you guys thinking about college football? Bro. If, if it's going to happen yeah. this year, because the MAC just was the, became the first conference to cancel this year. Thumbs down That's overall. Not happen. Yeah, I don't game, think it's going to be a big thumbs down. Everybody's going to cancel. I think. I think with the MAC doing it today, I think that's going to like yeah. going to lead to some other ones. The looking NFL, at now. the NFL is going to be mostly a cancel too. I think. Well, I I, you, you guys know season ticket holder. I can tell you right now, the Cardinals uh, already already offered to uh, three different plans is what they do. get three different options so you can let it ride. They, okay, start off the, the email was, we voided all your tickets. <laughs> 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 so let's start there. <laughs> so the top of the email was, all your tickets are voided. So your whole season is done. You're pretty much letting everybody know you ain't going to a game this year, right? Mm-hmm. So your other options are let it ride till next year so you can keep all your money in there and 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 just keep it in there for next season or you could get a partial refund and you determine how much of the refund you want of your money that's already in there um or uh darn doggone it what was the third option it was uh oh you can get a full refund Mm -hmm. so you had those as a choice okay but there you know and then if there is a game where fans can attend then they'll let you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and at that point, you know, but yeah, they, <clears throat> at least for the Cardinals, I can't speak for the rest of the NFL. I'm a season ticket holder for the Cardinals. They, you know, pretty much the season's done. You ain't going to a ball, yeah. you know, um, well, they're, they're all going to those owners meetings. I'm sure there are probably some agreement there. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. see how the Cardinals are going to do it. And the rest of the teams aren't just going to follow suit. Yeah. Um, uh, the Rams, I can tell you right now, because I used to be a Rams season ticket holder. I still have an account with the Rams. They still hound me. They still call, leave messages, want me to pay for season tickets. And I'm like, you got to be out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But they're, you know, they're trying to fund this new stadium any way they can. This will be the first year of the new stadium. If you remember, when they were building this stadium, they got robbed. They had those floods and all that sort of thing, which delayed the building of the stadium till this year. They were supposed to open last season, which would have at least got them going to the good, but they had to delay that, and they delayed the year they were supposed to get the Super Bowl and everything else because of it. It's a billion um, because among friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> My opinion on all the sports, all of them. I don't care which one it is, the NBA, uh, MLB, um, it, it, it just feels like JV, man. The NBA feels like I'm watching some practice games, which is which is oh, fine. Man. I mean, Did you see but, the Utah Jazz earlier? Utah, who was it? Utah. I, I didn't end up watching the rest of it, but I think it went to maybe went to second overtime. Utah Jazz versus oh, what's the other one? It was a good game. It was a really good game. I you're, can't, not really, you're not really. It, it, it reminds me of like an like the Olympics, like how like the Olympics yeah. is laid out. It's like a not really. It's not really noisy game, but it's the cameras going. I love how you get the camera right on the floor. You can see right on the floor the whole time. Yeah, I love it, dude. I I'm love an it. NBA guy. I kind of like some of the NBA games. I thought the NBA can get away with it because they got the bubble thing going. I mean, unless yeah. someone else goes. The funeral and decides to hit the strip club and wings on the way back. I think a lot of them <laughs> can be isolated enough. I think hockey's doing the same thing. That's I've why they're getting people to spend those wings. They said, "Man, them are the best damn wings you can have." Well, some people say, "Well, if you're out, you're out." So, 
the only guy that he ended up in, here in Atlanta. He went to the he went to the strip club and got the wing. He said he was just going for the wings. They were yeah, playing. and we know Atlanta has like the strip club with strip clubs there. So people remember they had all those players there were there before the, years ago. You don't go for the titties, you go for the food. That's yeah. the <laughs> Same excuse that people use for Hooters, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I was gonna say on a baseball tip, one, I was gonna say because I know, Joe, you're a big baseball fan and bum as well. I found out about that rule they have if it goes to extra innings, which you guys thought about that, where runner starts on second base. And the other thing was, shout out to the Dodger fan who bought the cutout and put Bernie as his cutout from Weekend at Bernie's at the game. (laughs) (laughs) That that was a good one. (laughs) Yeah, I've been saying all year that, that, that rule where you start somebody on second base and extra innings. That's not major league baseball. That's that's sandlot baseball. Yeah. yeah. That's not that's, that's not real. That's, that's a corporate head in the office at that point trying to hit in the games early. That's not yeah. like a true player. Yeah. And I don't think any of it matters because I don't think that season's going to uh, I think it's going to get folded at some point here. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to make the games faster cuz most people complain about the the, the, the only the, thing that's how, me you know, is it is Feels about the same as it, as it always was is golf. Yep. I'm not a huge they're golf watcher. Playing the they're playing the PGA this weekend in San Francisco. Yeah. So, and it, I mean, it looks exactly the same except for all the stupid idiots yelling crazy shit when people see right. up. I mean, everything else is exactly the same. Right, and and that stuff is not part of the actual game action. No, mm. the, the golf game itself, where the guys are swinging, you're supposed to be quiet anyway. Yeah, right. no. yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so watching it on TV, you get ninety nine and a half percent of what you would get anyway. Yeah, yeah. so golf. that's one where I would I would say you could pipe in some fake crowd noise of people screaming out "Baba Booey" and stuff. <laughs> now that would be natural. <laughs> You're the man. Yeah. <laughs> Which they do at some of the stages where they're in, but you would think some of these teams would be used to not playing with fans in the stands anyway. Because you think about it, it's only like about six to eight teams out of each conference or each league that do well. Everybody else kind of sucks, and it's, you're not used to people being with fans. <laughs> One thing I can say about the, the NBA that I do like. Um, now, 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 granted, the NBA I can just catch the highlights on YouTube, and that is good enough for me. I that I just I just can't take these JV games. But the one thing I can say about it is I like that after every damn call, they're not like arguing with the ref; they're just playing ball. Yeah, and yeah. I, I I feel like uh, the majority of the sports that are playing now, you know, credit to them. I feel like they're playing, and they're not just arguing every call. They're not mm. just arguing to be arguing now to play to the crowd and these sort of yeah. things. They're just playing ball, and I like that part. That part I do like, you know. Yeah. They should hopefully – hopefully some of this will carry on over to when they do play in front of fans and they'll remember these times, you know. Here's a question. What about the Globetrotters? Are they going to play? Keep playing the Washington Generals in front of no crowd? <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing was uh, you have the Washington football team thought about calling themselves the Generals mm. for a minute. Yeah. So it, <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, fun when you think about it. You know, renaming them the Generals is actually pretty appropriate since they haven't won a damn thing in forever. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're just, they're just like, you know, it might actually yeah. fit them quite well yeah. you know, to actually be called the, the you know, <laughs> instead of the Washington Football Club, the Washington General. But yeah, there there was a, a small, very small, small movement to, to get them named the Washington. Yeah, that's pretty I cool. I take pride in the fact that one in uh, one of my uh, first years of going to see the Globetrotters in the mid seventies, I saw them in a rare year when their opponent was not the Washington Generals. It was the same organization, same players, same coach. Red Klotz was his name. They briefly changed their name from the Washington Generals to the New Jersey Reds. Oh, huh. Yeah. There was that. Mid 70s. I went to see the Globetrotters, maybe it was like 70, 
two, I think, something like that, when I was like seven or eight or something mm -hmm. like that. Pacific Arena. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was taken to see the I was taken to see the Globe Triders a few times. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say a handful of times my uh, my dad took me to see the Globe Triders. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I, which I attended 18 straight years, believe it or not. At the wow. 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 That's, that's, that's impressive. Amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> oh my God. From like from like seventy five to ninety two, I think. Wow! wow. They didn't miss a year. Christmas, didn't they? Wasn't it over Christmas? Yeah, yeah. always. Still to this day, uh, the day after Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. <laughs> That's funny. Eighteen years in a row. <laughs> yep. That's a that's a, a quite a treat. Wow. I do got to say. I thought this would be the weekend. I would actually be in Bum's neighborhood. So I oh, got a shout Fresh out Fest. for yeah. Fresh Fest. Yeah. Year three, I still haven't made it yet. Didn't make it yeah. last year and missed the first. So you, I guess 2021 is my year. year. You didn't break your wrist this year, right? Yeah, yeah, I would have been in good shape. So 2021 must be the year, I guess. <laughs> no, but, but is it normally like this first weekend of August? It's this weekend. Yeah, it would have been this weekend. Well, my goal was I was actually supposed to go to New Jersey this coming week. I was going to drive into Pittsburgh, go to Fresh Fest, hopefully catch up with Bum while I was in town for a bit, okay. and then drive to New Jersey tomorrow. But okay. it is what it is. Corona kind of scaled that back. And, uh, okay, Rod. So as a, as a tourist to Pittsburgh, yeah, you know, Pittsburgh is the like working man's kind of like blue collar baby, blue collar place to eat. So, what would have been one of the first, you know, food places or or foods that you would have had in Pittsburgh? Well, you got to realize I went to school at WVU, so I was only seventy miles south of Pittsburgh. So, I would have had to make a return visit to Permani Brothers after all these years. Oh, wow. That would have been the first place I probably would have hit. Oh, do they still have the original in Oakland? It's still there. The original is in the Strip District. The, the second one is in Oakland. They're both still there. Yeah, I used to get the, uh, the um, what was it? The, uh, the um, shrimp and fries. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how you could practice social distancing, at least in the uh, Oakland location these days. <laughs> There's no way you can do that. I think, I think we've even covered uh, Pimani Brothers on this show in detail numerous times. Yeah, yeah. Some good food there. Pimani Brothers is definitely the place to go. Oh, well, you, you guys, guys big on that mustard beer that came out like a week ago. Yeah, I did a video on that. That was with uh, Oscar think? Blues teamed up with French's. Yeah, to make a mustard beer. Ooh, did, mustard. did you try it? I no, because you have to actually be at one of the Colorado locations or North Carolina. But oh, they okay. did open up order. And they sold out first day last Saturday. It was for National Mustard Day last Saturday. It was um, weird. But it was I think weird. they're bringing out more. You did have it then. That was weird. What did you think of it? I don't know. They said it was like supposed to be citrusy, like like wheat to match up with like something with mustard, like a dog and a mustard. Yeah, like it didn't mustard. have like I wanted full on like mustard punch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever said that before. Oh, yeah. I, just, uh, I don't know. I it was just like a lighter beer with some citrus, I guess. It wasn't nothing blew me away now about it, but it mustard. didn't. They did put mustard in it, like on the video I, I shared their Oscar Blues video. Yeah. They showed the making of, and they did put mustard in the beer when they made it. Yeah, I got a little bit of that. It wasn't as big as I expected. I thought it was going to be the massive gimmick, like mustard beer. But yeah, I could get it. It's like a doing it for a bar backyard barbecue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. But speaking of novelty type things, so. Oh. I'm actually on va I'm actually on vacation this week. So oh, shit. I'm gonna be going down to the cabin. So I picked up some of this down for the Smoky Mountains. Oh some pickled moonshine. Oh, those things nice. are great. Yeah, so the moonshine's in the pickle. You can eat the pickles. Oh you can drink the moonshine. Oh, They're man. so good. I've I've had some of those. Oh, okay. Are we gonna do this? Are, are we gonna do this? Do oh, I, I got some. I got something else too. If you want to see that. Do I gotta go? Oh, oh way. Do I gotta go in the fridge and show you? Oh, oh, smoky. Mango, mango habanero whiskey. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that sounds. Have good. you had the um, 
the dickle that's done in Tabasco barrels. Oh, no, I haven't had those. That shit's pretty tasty. Yeah, I've had the peanut butter whiskey they've also done. That was a pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. The, uh, something- oh, Roger, that reminds me. Wasn't it you that had the coffee flavored tequila? Oh yeah, that was actually good too. Yeah, yeah, that was um, oh, it was like a newer company. Um, begins with a C. I can't think of the name right now. Let me just see if I see it on here. Have you had it, or have you seen anything like it? No. Well, the first time I had heard, it and the only time was with you. Okay. Uh-uh. When you had it on your show, uh, well, Patron does one as well, but I haven't had the Patron version. Uh, what is this thing? Oh, and and hey, thank you to Patrick, man. I appreciate the donation, yeah. friend. Cheers to Patrick, man. Oh, shit, Patrick. Oh, shit. We're getting closer to our <laughs> yeah, we're getting closer to the earphone. That's the earphone fund right there. Yeah, we're getting. Oh, man. Long zeros, that's gonna add to my paycheck. Way. We're almost there, Joe. We're almost there. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're getting there little by little, yeah. That'll play, pay for one of those uh, little transistors on the left side of the uh, inside of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well. We better close this one out for this week, man. I appreciate everyone jumping in. Uh, thank you to Rod J for, for joining in. Zach, good to see you again, my friend. Yep. Andrew, Tom, of course, Ruxpin, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> everyone in the chat, hey, thank you to Pat, and, and thank you to Neary, man, for the donations. Really appreciate it. Uh, we will see you guys next week, man. All right. Cheers, everybody. See you guys next week. Next week. Oh.